Okay, I made it. I made it. All right, chat. All right, you ready? I am. It's time. Here we go. Oh. oh. You good? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Overwatch 2 developer PvP live stream. I'm your host, Matt Mr. X, and throughout the stream, I'll be joined by some awesome content creators and developers from the Overwatch team as we learn more about Overwatch 2's PvP by watching some of these awesome maps in action played live. It's going to be an extremely exciting day. As uh, Aaron mentioned during the developer update, uh, everything you see today is work in progress, uh, but you know, being able to see some of this stuff you know, day in and day out, uh, it's truly awesome. Really excited for what the Overwatch team has to show for you guys today. So let's bring on some of my guests uh, throughout the day. Uh, I'll be joined by the members of the Overwatch dev team. It's Associate Art Director Dion Rogers, Lead Hero Designer Jeff Goodman, and Game Director Aaron Keller. How are you guys feeling today? Yeah, so much for having us. Yeah, no, the delay. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Now, we've learned so much about the a -A PvE round. aspect uh, of Overwatch 2. We've learned some stuff about, you know, PvP, you know, with uh, push, roll passives, uh, you know, new heroes. You saw Sojourn at BlizzCon Line. Uh, what else has gone into the development process for Overwatch 2's PvP? You're right. We've talked a lot about the story side of, of Overwatch 2 and the, the cooperative PvE. There's the shot. That, That's the shot everyone thinks is 5v5. But That's not what the it was. Overwatch team My has opinion. also been we'll hard at work on the PvP side of the game. We're question. making new Did features, you know new heroes, new maps. I'm going to alerts. Which we'll be okay. I'm going to mute alerts for this. And we've also been looking at the way this, PvP is played. Um, it, it's changed over time on, on the live game. And we'll talk about a lot of the changes that, that we want to be making and that we're currently making um, to PvP. But... There's one in particular that I want to highlight right now uh, because it's substantial and I think it has a big impact on the way the entire team approaches PvP on Overwatch 2. And it's it's also something Is that, that an AirPod we're all really on his mic? <laughs> excited about. Overwatch has always been played with two teams of six players. Overwatch 2 will be played with two teams of five players oh it is confirmed it's support, real two dps holy shit one tank right i was gonna i mean my next question was gonna be like okay holy like, shit it's thing. real so we still have we still have a breakdown across the board it's, it's not completely open so wow one tank two dps play overwatch two nailed supports. it they actually uh, nailed it led you guys down the road to make this change well buddy it was a good run there are a lot of reasons for why we wanted to make this change well it's fun playing with as you as i dude. said earlier yeah overwatch has, uh. has changed over time um we've we've gone from having no hero limits Damn. at all in the game before launch you could pick six winstons if you wanted to for for your team composition to having a hero limit we ended up introducing a roll lock um over the course of the game and we feel like this is the next step in the way that overwatch ought to be played if you think this about isn't it the way i wanted to see this start to be honest with you there's a lot going on in an Overwatch map. It is incredibly fast paced. And we have always tried to make our combat easy to read and very understandable. And even with all of the work that we put into that, sometimes it's just hard to track what 11 other players are doing on the battlefield. Removing no, two of those simplifies everything and it allows players to understand everything that's happening around them and to be able to make better choices because of it. Um, this change obviously has a really big impact on tanks. Um, and we will get into some of the changes that, that we're making to tanks and, and to some of the other, some of the other roles in a bit, but tanks can be problematic. They, they're a DPS hero is simple. They're, they're shooting, um, but, but a tank has abilities that can be noisy, um, or when stacked with other tanks can can cause problems for other teams to to try to to try to overcome and counter like and, and a great example of that is two main tanks on the field sometimes that can be very oppressive to another team um i think with five with I'm five sorry, players what? out there 
there is a greater chance of of certain people being able to carry. I, I don't want to be critical, but did they just the say two main tanks is oppressive? There's just one less player on the other team that you need to take care of, and each player now has the opportunity to have a larger this is individual not a good start. impact on their own team. And we've we've tried a lot of different versions of this. Um, internally, we've tried a four v four format. We've tried. Oh. Uh, uh, Three like, like I said, GPS, I was pretty sure they weren't going to do five v five. I was, I was pretty sure too. Even early on, I was, I was, I was always, I was, I was like confident. I was like, no, I don't think they're going to do that. Seven v seven. But they did it. Format of the game. They did it. Um, and we, we always had some problems with them. And that's just a lack of understanding. Our, our Double main tank has never Jeff been good. Goodman has really run with, and I think he probably has a little, a little more he can say about it. I think yeah, we need to see how the hero like design the is too. 100. Like I'm, 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 open, I'm open-minded, but this is, this is not the start. I was, <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't expect it. I honestly didn't. Because I know there was, it looked like 5v5 at LizCon, and I was kind of like, oh, but never to be, never to be spoken about again. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jeff, I assume that uh, obviously, you know, I hate to be negative to, to start this, but I'm really I assume sorry. there will be kind but, of like holistic changes overall, right? I think like I'm really sorry, but you probably need to rework some of the other stuff that goes on. Oh yeah, I mean, this is a kind of change. So uh, that imp impacts like the huge part of the game, obviously, and it, um, that's the thing. They just about mean double sort of barrier, but signals on the main tank. Balance is like it's sort of easy in some sense. Well, it's easy, but it, it's certainly easier to make sort of a single hero change, and you know, maybe even like a hero rework like we've done in the past. But to change something so fundamental as you know, there's only one tank allowed, um, really kind of cascades into a lot of different questions, and and, and you know. Uh, problems that demand answers. So, I mean, the obvious thing that comes up in people's mind probably immediately when we say this is, how does Roadhog work in a world where you could pick Reinhardt instead? Um, like, how do they, how is that as a, um, an equivalent pick? So that's sort of our first question when we first were doing it too. Like, we like this 5v5 thing. It was super fun when we play tested it. That has a lot of promise, but okay, we have to solve a lot of problems if we go this way. Um, so that's sort of why it sort of has led to this larger set of changes and there's a lot of other changes we'll talk about as well um but it, it definitely um cascades you know for example healing just healing you can kind of focus on one tank now and the tanks are even beefier than they, than they are on live the individual tanks because this is one of them so we're now we're thinking well is it is it too good to just play like two main healers and dump healing in your tank and is it too hard to kill now and maybe healing is too good now and you know it's just it's it's but this is the time to do it. This is what we wanted to do with our watch too, is look at core things like this and make sure that the, where we want them to be. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I was going to say, like, uh, you know, uh, I'm not a designer, but I think that, like, this is the first real opportunity you guys have had to reset. Like, you couldn't just do this right. on the live game, right? Uh, I, I think that's kind of, like, the, what, I, what I assume, right, is that this is, like, a holistic look at the game overall and, like, changes that you couldn't do on live because they're just so massive. Exactly. And like I said, there's other changes that go along with this as well um, that are also equally impactful. So it's sort of like we just like shook the ground underneath the game like really heavily and like all the pieces are kind of in disarray <laughs> a little bit. So some of the heroes won't even be playable really by our, our, our playtesters here because um, they're either heroes we're already kind of looking at heavily, or we plan on looking at heavily, so it's kind of not worth showing them in this context or ones that we haven't addressed yet, things like that. So um, that just sort of gives you context of like how big this kind of change is. Well, uh, I I want to get right into the game. Uh, oh, I yeah. want to see it live. I'm sure the fans want to see it live after getting all this like info. Uh, the first map we're going to be showing you guys today is New York City. Uh, Dion, what kind of map is this? Um, New York is a hybrid map, so a brand new hybrid map for Overwatch 2. And there's a fun new payload for players to battle over. The world building team had a great time just creating this Overwatch depiction of New York. It's tons of neat details and fun Easter eggs for the players to find. So I, I think it, it should be fun to take a look at this. Yeah, no, uh, I when you guys showed this at uh, BlizzCon Line, I was so excited. Obviously from New York uh, myself, would love to see the Midtown Tunnel go over uh, some of the adjustments that you guys have made uh, to it here uh, in, <laughs> in Overwatch 2. Uh, just... Yeah, just a, a beautiful map. I have to imagine this is one of the locales that you guys have been dying to do for a while. We've been wanting to. There's a lot of people on the team from New York or who have spent some part of their life there. So it's always been on the list and Overwatch 2 felt like the right time to do it. Oh, this is yeah, just... uh, it, uh, and no short of Easter eggs, I would say. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, on some of these maps so far. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, get, get, get some love at the beginning. But uh, yeah, this will be our first real look at 
5v5. Uh, mm-hmm. I've had the opportunity to like kind of watch some games like as they've kind of tested it out. Uh, it it's it c- still keeps that Overwatch you know fast paced feel, but it uh, it doesn't have like the you know the kind of the the clumped up chaos that you sometimes see of live. I think it kind mm-hmm. of speaks to really what you were pointing to, Jeff, is that you know, when you have you know that one less tank in the equation, you can actually make the tanks more aggressive and more offensive. Uh, but it's also just kind of easier for the viewer and just people at home to track. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you'll see probably a lot of play here. One of the biggest things you'll notice, because there's less protection uh, from coming from tank players just to directly block bullets for the team, um, typically we'll find a lot more player on the map corners, map angles, um, like often try, people going for cheeky flanks and stuff. Yeah, but Dion loves this. Yeah, they get to use the uh, environment a lot more. It's a bit more tactical. Yeah. Yeah. What's, uh, do you think, do you think, do you think so Curly Mustache is going to um, pop off right here? So it kind of, you know, I, that was one of the first things. No, my, my money's on uh, Frosty we Feet. Like, this is oh, really okay. good direction. Not, I mean, not Curly like Mustache? I there's nah. Like, you know, as a designer, you okay. sort of have to look past the immediate like problems in front so of you. So this is the gameplay like, okay, of it. They have, a, like, they have a Rhine. Is this pre-recorded or is this live right now? Like tank imbalances and this healing issues. Oh, it has to be pre-recorded, I'm guessing. Okay. Th- at the heart There's of no this, way it is really cool. And so that's that's really I'm more than positive it's pre-recorded. These problems. I think something that's really interesting about that, too, is that the gameplay is, is more fluid than it was before. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. a, a lot of times in Overwatch, you get these these really hard battle lines that that get drawn between the two teams um, and there's just less damage incoming um, and so you're able to kind of move around a little bit more and um, you'll see it here a lot of times um, the chokes aren't as hard of a space to to get through there's still a choke mm-hmm. in the map and you still have to work at it but there can be a lot more like pushing through and, and pulling back on the choke and it's something that, that I'm like, right? personally personally really excited about yeah, I was going to say, uh, how has uh, the 5v5 move affected map design? I feel like it kind of has to have a, a huge impact on you know, what you guys are able to do, create different, you know, speaking about like players being able to take more control of the game, right? You know, creating more flanking routes, you know, more opportunity for, you know, the, the ash to go to the side. Looking at this, pan, you could just know, walk through this choke things. now. There's like nothing yeah, there's you can do about it. there's a lot more opportunity um, for, for players to do that. Um, but at the same time, um, when, when you go for a flank, you're not leaving five players behind, you're leaving four <laughs> players behind. And so you, you kind of have to be weighing some of these decisions in your head. The game is just as strategic as it was before, um, if not more so because of the, the, the individual ability for players to have you such see a Winston large scatter impact arrow? on the match. Yeah, I think um, that's I think a, I think map it's design, just, it's, um, been, um, it's like a pulse, really but they haven't used like, a, they don't have a different art for it. You know what I mean? Just for one oh. hero. Uh, they said that, that, that was what I was like. I was like, wasn't there a screenshot of Winston with Scatter Arrow? Like, there's no way. Like, that's... Um, but he, that, he has a new ability, I think. To, it's like Pulse or something like that. that. Kind of feels good for Reaper. You know what I mean? Oh, like, okay. like it does more Farrah. damage, like for like, um, like, like you know what I mean? Like one quick burst. We'll still be able okay, to that makes play sense. 5v5 on I remember that they mentioned that at BlizzCon. They said like they've been using it as like a placeholder because they didn't want to make more art. Right. That is a awesome payload, Dion. By the way. You know, we've always in. In the artwork of the maps, we've always placed what we consider cover. I want to see much more first person. I want to see, see, see how like the op tanks play that. I want, yeah, I, w- I was gonna say I want to see more first person in this. Like I want to see, yeah, like, like, like this. Like this, I want to see like as much top down. Now with five, like I understand, like you know, obviously Ryan's gonna be played and Winston. I want to see how like how's Diva gonna be now? How's Zarya gonna be? You know, what have they done to like Sigma? I want to see that type of match too because I think that'd be important. If you look at Kings in general. That I'm gonna like. Section, I mean, the Winston and Ryan are literally like, useless. I'm, I'm watching how them play. Like, cover. like it's not like a, against them, but like they're play. Like you can't do anything with this. Yeah. They're not. They're right. not even being used. Like, like if yeah. you actually just yeah. took them no, off the field right a, now, the game would be playing point. the exact same. Kind of see it here, that's my problem right now. Stuff like that. The game is not changed. Like, sorry, the game has changed. The tanks that are on the field right now are not even being used. Like, you could legitimately just remove the Winston and the Reinhardt. It would be the same exact game right now. You can take. Uh, something we saw uh, at BlizzCon line was the uh, two fire strike charge. Uh, I think that's why they're going to have the Overwatch League uh, players play it later, probably. Jeff, when we were that's what I'm assuming is going to happen. Uh, my Winston on live, uh, not <laughs> able to shoot at range. <laughs> can you can right. you explain that to us a little bit? So I mean, yeah, I was wondering if people picked up on that. So we were first watching Winston there. Um, this is an example of you know some of the tank changes we're talking about um, in regards to five and five, but also a larger change we're talking about making tanks. Uh, a lot more aggressive, be able to 
um, be a little more hyper on the damage side aggressive. and less just raw protection. Um, so on Winston's side, they can't even side, go in. Um, he's ulting right now, unfortunately. You, you can't see it, they but, just said like uh, make tanks more aggressive, but, but the Winston but his, jumped uh, in one time and only got 500 right HP on his primal. Charge up like they, like they can't. Blast you can't play it more aggressive. It's the same thing. Fired off as a single sort of like blast attack at longer range. Um, like, watch his health so pool. He his health pool is just getting chunked. The charge up is kind of interesting with it for him because you could do it while you're leaping. And so there's like a block. theoretically more burst combos you can do where you're jumping on top of somebody, charge up in the air, and burst, you know, release it right before you land on them. And then you get the stomp damage too. And you can shock them or do a quick melee combo. Um, it's a lot more interesting things. On top of the fact that, you know, the Winston players know a lot of times you're, you're you know, you shock somebody, they're getting away. You think you can finish them and they just like, you know, fair abuse <laughs> yeah. away or somebody just barely gets away. You get that extra you know, alternate fire shot to try to take, take him out on the way. And it's actually interesting yeah. playing against him now because you now are cognizant of that. So <laughs> sometimes you're leaving a little earlier. Like, well, I'm going to get blasted probably if I just like run away. So uh, I have to be able to survive that. Yeah, um, I think that's one of the decisions all Winston players face. It's like, okay, I've jumped on this player. I've gotten them weak. I can either now get out of my bubble and try to finish them off or just kind of hope a teammate does. But now giving him... I think it kind of goes back to more like that player, you know, agency that you were talking about, being able to kind of take over the game, being able to finish it off. Uh, this uh, the nano boost and Ryan, uh, th this will never. That was the most useful that tank has been so far. <laughs> just, just seeing there, just seeing Reinhardt nano boosted, just swinging. I'm sure it makes the fans out there happy that I uh, know that was a a, a dragon no, blade. Not really, because that's normal. He was able to take out is uh, <laughs> right. it's kind of the bane of existence of a lot of people. Uh, but this yeah. looks like I guess the second checkpoint, right? So. This will unlock the interior of uh, Grand Central Station. Oh, this is awesome. So it goes in. So the payload kind of goes inside of the station and uh, uh, kind of curves around, I guess. Mm hmm. And you can see the payload is driven by an Omnic, who is uh, yeah. a little Easter egg to our production direct uh, production director on the team. Our executive producer. Uh, so he got a name. Yes, Chaco. <laughs> I, he's uh, gonna be a fan favorite. Oh, he's even got it on the back. I didn't realize. I thought it was like, I thought it was like an unofficial name. Like, oh yeah, Chaco. No, he nope, was, he's he's yeah. got the suit. Our executive producer said so he's uh, he's helped us out a lot, and it was only fitting. Uh, he has a. Uh, that we. He's lived in um, New York as well, yeah. so he <laughs> he helped out a lot on this map. So. Oh, and awesome. we have um, countless debates about the right type of pizza with him as well <laughs> yes right <laughs> well, yeah i mean new york style pizza is the dominant pizza uh I it's the first it's good the take water, they've had but uh that is probably <laughs> for a different stream yeah do you really uh, want to get into this my my thoughts on the, the the water in new york creating the better pizza dough uh i you you also notice uh at least i notice the new sounds especially when like ash oh, yeah. shoots uh that is something that uh you know it was discussed at blizzcon line but I think it's different to kind of see it in action and also mm -hmm. to see all of the other players at the same time with those audio changes. It just makes the game feel even you know, more realistic. Yeah, the, the sounds can get really punchy and it just feels good to hold the trigger down with these different heroes. Um, They're not wrong. They, that more that sounds amazing. That so sounds great. We've spent a lot of time not just um, developing what these sounds are, but how they play in different environments. So. We've kind of upgraded the entire sound system across the game. So let's say when um, that Ash is in a side room firing from that room, you really kind of understand where they're at and what type of environment that they're in better than you did before. And then you can kind of take that information and make different decisions or, or additional wow. decisions because of it. All right, so we got a map complete from the offense here. Not bad. Not bad in their first go. The the players are so competitive. I have to say this to the stream that we were like, yeah, yeah, this is fun. Like everybody have a great time. And then everyone's like, put your SR in the chat. We're gonna make balanced teams. <laughs> like who's playing what? It's uh, it's just I feel like it's just the nature of Overwatch, right? Like it it always starts off, yeah, let's play for fun. And then you know you you lose a game. And you're like, all right, like uh, everybody pick it up. Like let's uh, let's change things. <sighs> It's like that meme. I'm gonna just like, thank subs because I'm playing, kind of annoyed. Relaxing in your else. chair and then you lose. Uh, you King Jester thanks for the two for two months. <laughs> Trap House yeah, Killing. Thank you to subs. X Prince Gabriella. It's those nice things for ten months. You lose like two uh, and teach, you're like, you win prime. one and then you're like, oh, I play to lose. Thanks so much. You, you, you lose a few more and then the next thing you know, you wake up and you're like, well, why'd I do that? Like 500 SR down the drain. That's uh. So this will be an opportunity to see like Roadhog has a a solo tank, uh, coming in for the offensive side here. 
Uh, I feel like he's just going to be, even on uh, live, right? He just takes up so much space, Jeff. Like, yeah. and, and he takes up space, not with a shield, but like just his body. As I say that, mm -hmm. we, we have Azaria swap. But uh, talk to me a little bit about like the thoughts on you know, how, how like the Roadhogs of the world, Divas, uh, even sure. Zarya. I know there's some interesting stuff with Zarya uh, as a solo wow. tank. Yeah, so like I said before, a lot of this is the work in progress. We're still um, yeah. sort of addressing here by hero. Um, but like, because once we started going to one tank, it was sort of the big question. You, you, all like, right, there it is. They got two bubbles of each. What direction are we pushing tanks now? Are we, are we going, we're trying to make Roadhog, you know, a lot more st static defensively and have, you know, big barriers or something to protect his team? Or do we want more Dude. the opposite? We're like, oh, it's Reinhardt, not. So it's, this, she can just use whatever one she, she, get, she can either. Give them some more okay. and be a little more like, uh, we're like a diva um, and so we definitely opted for that ladder rat after playing because it's like not only is it just more fun to, to have that kind of I'm fine with it sharing a cooldown I'm cool but, with that actually you know, a lot of but what people uh, had a lot of comments on the, in the past just, is when the metas get too full of barriers and shields and honestly even sometimes when there's just you know the one Arissa blocking you with just the, the chain shields and it's just like you know people had comments like oh i feel like i'm shooting shields all the time which so like we were definitely hearing all that and you could see some of the balance changes we made it in the past in the live game and been trying to address this but um once we got into this situation where we're like oh we, this is sort of an opportunity actually here to reduce a lot of these effects and you know we still want them to be there and present and be important and you can still block huge abilities um they still ha have a decent amount of health but you know less than they had before um but then in response to that we get to you can see reiner here he got well he hit the ball right there he didn't cancel it but you can cancel your charge <laughs> and you can get two you can to cancel he soda um, died so he's the canceling charge is one of those like sneaky things that seems like to some people it might be kind of a minor change but it almost like completely changes how he plays a lot of ways it's actually really fun because you can uh it has a really fast recovery when you cancel so you can like charge up to a group and then cancel and immediately ult and just like knock everyone down so the fact that you can even do that is its own now like sort of mini game that knock who down you're never gonna make it. it if people know you have your ult you think you have your ult you wait can how are you gonna right pronounce to them and shatter when you don't have a bubble like they don't want to fight you necessarily like, like normally because they don't want to get earth shattered so sometimes yeah. you can like bluff people and are running for cover and you didn't even have it or you save it or something so and it also just allows him to you know get in there and be more aggressive without sacrificing his health bar yeah it just sounds like another uh change almost like how you kind of mentioned like stuff like that you gotta remember though we we don't even know what the new heroes are either as you're playing and testing, so there could be some tanks that have like some really cool things, like, like yeah where the winston combo you can you know, load too. up that secondary fire i mean fire, even with a like, cool play style damage, like land on yeah, that would no, just mean that other out, heroes just like, become outdated and unused kind of like back in double shield like reinhardt play right yeah i'm trying to figure out so with the zarya bubbles when zarya bubbles it bubbles zarya and somebody else no she the cooldowns just share blizzcon line and just like a trailer where like she can bubble herself twice she can project a bubble twice and then shatters them all or she can just do one of each i mean able to make plays like that's what it looks like yeah sick He's also it, got like, if you look at the cooldown of it, it's uh, it's it's timer control cooldown. Control his charge more, so like a, you can like a circle, turn not like each one. Corners more. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So the the charge oh, well. while you cancel, it's also more aggressive. Widow still more one personal. shots. Okay. Um, I think okay, something so else bubbles, that's really okay, interesting. Um, if oh, you so look it's at the, what the experimental one. If people have noticed what's happening with Zarya, is she has two charges. Yeah. No. No. She still bubbles a single target. It's actually what we play tested in. It's uh, not. It's not oh, the group the bubble like the old one. So as people probably noted, like. Oh, so. You know, some of okay, those changes were a lot of them were just silly, kind of fun, like permanently flying. Signal. I get what you're saying now. But you know, there were some changes I, we threw in there. I mean, like, I just watched. People react to this. I'm so is Widow just gonna to dominate now? Uh, and Zarya. We. I don't know. I, I have to see what everything. So. Everybody like. I don't know. Uh, Aaron, you know I don't know what's gonna change. We don't really know. What any of like the it took me a while abilities are across the board, once, like once I, I don't know. Oh no, hundred percent. But like, I mean, from what we're looking at right now, they would have just walked out of spawn and one tap the Zarya. Yeah. You know, the charge in and. and <laughs> yeah, we were joking about that the other day, where uh, uh, even uh, I'm like. Yeah, like, like the the canceling the charge just feels so right that yeah. I, I, but you're so like trained to kind of how it is like where you're just charging into walls right. <laughs> that I was like wait I was like I don't have to do this anymore no. like I can just I can just go like uh, it's it's such like a great quality of life change yeah yeah something else I, I think that's oh, really interesting here is this like this fight's been going on for a while neither tank has fallen 
Um, and the, the oh, support yeah. have been doing such a good job at, at keeping the tanks up because there's there's only one but, of them. But that, to be realistic, to though, like I hate to say on. it, um, the, both of the tanks the aren't doing anything. Really, They're both AFK. Really good being the tank player now. Like the amount of times you get into this situation where it feels hopeless. You're low on health. Mm -hmm. um, a, there's a bunch of the enemy players focusing on you. And you're like, I don't want to be rude. Like, I don't care what their SRs are. You know what I mean? Um, like, I don't want to be some elitist so piece of shit. But good. they're you not doing really anything. Powerful. Neither of them are doing anything. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, it, I think that it, that has to be something that you guys have kind of gotten in feedback, that from a support point of view, you're able to dump resources into this, just This is literally the meta that it looks like. The, uh, the Rhine doesn't even do exist. A, they go whatever they want. Like a Hanzo right, Widow, Zen, Bap, can do a little bit and more Rhine's damage. just there. And, you know, Zen, you can kind of orb the tank and then focus on the damage. That uh, probably has to be way easier in supports now. For sure, yeah, we, like we got a lot look, of look at, like they're just rolling. For players they just roll. It's a lot easier to focus, and a lot of times you almost have this like uh, communication between the two support players, and you know you have like Mercy's like I'm just gonna be you know on tank duty and just be on tank basically the whole time, and you have like Lucio or something like that to, to spot heal everybody else and you can speed everybody up. But there's other strats like sometimes we've seen people go too big. Heal, you know, main healers essentially, and try to just focus so hard on their tank that even with like Discord on them, it's just hard to kill them. Um, so that's going to be just interesting strat too. So I don't even sure like what the like it's, it's, meta it's, is. I, I really don't like. I'm not analyzing their gameplay in any way whatsoever. But, settled, but yeah, but uh, but the fact that you're like, like people are they're uh, commenting like, see, look, look, they're doing is, great. But like, uh, does oh, this yeah, look? You know, actually looks really cool. They're just AFK. Something obviously that's incredibly new. I think on live, like the it's kind of displayed on the right. Yeah, yeah we're there's, generally um, looking through this. Go, oh, go ahead, sorry, Jeff. I was saying we're generally looking at anywhere we can improve uh, hero-specific UI stuff like this, and we felt like this could use you know a big update and it'd be a lot more readable. Yeah, um, I think one of the things I'm excited about with the Winston was exploding on the jump. Is um, it's not just on. Zen, I mean, he did. But it's on he fed. Also, to be fair, you see the portrait. But of how the, do you not feed right now? That you're healing. Um, and so it's just a lot easier to, to kind of figure out who you've got um, instead of just using something like a nameplate, you know? Um, and yeah, and it's not off to the side, right? It's like center screen, so you're yep. able to still kind of focus down the middle. Yeah, and you can see his Discord is down there as well. So you have like Harmony and Discord orbs are kind of both um, shown on each side of the, of the ult at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we, we have an overtime here. I, I can imagine the comms are... Uh... Everybody's starting <laughs> to get pretty sweaty now. <laughs> so, so, uh, we, we, we get towards the end of the map. Uh, so th this has really been, I, I gotta say for you guys probably, uh, th this is probably awesome to see like the game actually being, it's one thing I think to play, but now to like observe and be able mm -hmm. to watch. And obviously, you know, the people you guys work with every day, this has to be pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it definitely uh, is. We've been playing it in this state for a long time too. And it's always, it's always so tough to um, to play a game a certain way at work and then go home and it, it operates in a totally different way and you're <laughs> yeah. playing with people online and you can't help but think like, if only you knew <laughs> right. <laughs> what I was playing, you know, every, every right. day. Um, and so it's just, it feels really good to, to have that out in front of, in front of Shock, our community. Shock, I'm fucking so in awe. Kind of see what we've been doing. Yeah. There's actually a ton uh, of like small changes in here too. Like I'm curious if, people picked up on it after one game um like one example of a small change that uh actually we may end up removing but it's in this build right now is um because we've had it for a while now but we just had to do this discussion maybe we want to pull it again is uh we've actually slowed the movement acceleration rate of everybody in the game just very slightly huh. um and the reason for that was to try to create um a little more uh sort of prediction element to shooting an enemy as opposed to like you can kind of you know, ADA, D spam a lot of times, or just like turn directions so fast that it was really hard to lead a shot. Or you know, sometimes it felt like you're, you're guessing a little bit on a ha which direction they're going to go. So we tried to like just notch it down just a little bit, so you can, you can't really feel it as much in in first person. But um, it's kind of one of those subtle things. But uh, after sitting with her for a while, even just like I think it was like last week or earlier this week, we we started bringing up a thread again. Like, do we want to keep this? Actually, this has been around for a while. Is everyone still happy with this? So that's just this an example of like the core. 
like uh, among the design team. <laughs> it like, is, it, there's yeah. a lot of back and forth on this one. So, but I think what it, it whether or not we keep a change like that in the game, I think what it Wait, speaks to is that to for discussion that it's the, not uh, because the amount of system that needs to go. Deep we're this is the stupidest at, like, shit. Right. I'm just gonna say what Amazon, everyone's the fucking the mind. Yeah, Seems Overwatch like no, uh, is not no the game that we just watched. That we just watched. Untouched, right? Where let's take out the point that they like, look like they were silver. Kind of every rock. That was see, the most dog shit Overwatch do. I've ever uh, watched. I, bring somebody in I don't care the if they're community. bronze, uh, silver, quick, I gold, can, uh, diamond, or gem. That was uh, dude, dog shit. What would you think? First looks. What'd you have? What'd you think, man? Uh, I'll be honest, I was a little bit skeptical when I first uh, heard about five v five. Don't fucking pander, please. Rip to the off tanks kind of thing, but um. I don't know. Based off watching that uh, first map there on New York, I don't know. It looks quite spicy. This does could be quite good. Yeah, no, uh, uh, I, I'm really excited. Like, as Come on, don't who, pander. Uh, I I will wait in the DPS queue. Uh, you know, as 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 long as I gotta wait. You know, and but now like seeing the tanks and seeing how aggressive you can play and you know push the pace. Uh, I'm I'm excited uh, to to be able to kind of now d dive. Not into going the tank to. Role. And but also I genuinely kind of want to turn it off. Uh, like I'm not like I, there's like a little inkling. Damage, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, super buff tanks. You're just gonna go in, right? This is. Uh, yeah, it's always been That's the dumb thing when, well, when you're playing Reinhardt, right? You don't want to charge in most of the time, but now it's like, yeah, just go in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now, 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 yeah, now, now I'm, uh, I'm going full throttle. I'm charging back in. We can bring, uh, we can bring uh, Aaron and Jeff back in, uh, as our, our next map's gonna be a game mode that we saw at BlizzCon line, uh, BlizzCon in 2018. It seems like uh, forever ago, is a uh, push. Uh, how has the game mode changed since we last saw it? Um. We haven't made a lot of changes to the mode yeah. itself, at least as far as like the big rules go for it, but we've continued developing for it. So we we Listen have more than one. I don't care about them talking about they haven't. They just said they haven't changed we have anything, more so than fuck one off. That we'll even be looking at today. But let's be realistic um, for a so second. We're really committed to the tanks, mode. People um, don't like people when, when tanks are OP, nobody has fun, thing. right? Except the tank players. Um, and even I then, they're not having that much fun. The interesting thing is if you're if you're not dominating the other tank, then you're getting flamed. From the outside, it sort of looks like it's there are so many levels people. of this is wrong it's um, not even funny from toxicity levels to the, to the, the entire core of the gameplay has been changed in the map that makes to this very special the way that I almost think the heroes push, are supposed to be played um, more as a that literally that last or, point third four or point or fight a, was a literally the most boring shit i've ever watched more than a, it was boring a, a they literally stood payload. afk um, chat and Somebody remind me at the end of the, the stream. Please the, remind the me, and I'll go back really to rewatch that fight. Um, so because nothing happened in here that I think can get played. Literally, and push, nothing and a lot of that has to do happened. With just the, the Both tanks stood AFK in the map, and also because of how quickly it moves. Yeah, now if you've never seen push before, uh, there's a robot Tell me I'm in wrong. the middle. Both teams will come out and kind of fight for it, and then once you get control, you can start pushing your barricade towards uh, the opponent's spawn. It's the name push, guys. <laughs> uh, Stylosa, you played it. Yeah, no, yeah, uh, at yeah. BlizzCon. How'd you how'd you find it then? I mean, it seems like such a long time ago when I played this at BlizzCon. Uh, yeah, it was pretty hectic. I mean, I, I will say though, the uh, teams were horrendously. I think if the reaction is not strong and, enough uh, I mean, I from the community, like they're going to keep it. XQC, uh, it could Fran change. And me, they do listen to us sometimes. People, it, it, it was but, a massacre. That's cruel. <laughs> I'll be honest, I was just AFK. <laughs> it didn't really matter. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was. Um, I can't wait to see it. I, I just, hey, any Overwatch 2 news, give it me. I'll consume that stuff. I <laughs> Just give it me. Uh, how do you guys think it feels now uh, in 5v5? Because the last time we saw Push at BlizzCon, the, the PvP was six on six. Does it play any different, you guys feel, especially on Toronto? A little bit. Um, so Push has always been maybe our most hectic mode oh, yeah. or our, our most dynamic game mode. Um, and it, part of the reason for that is the way these maps are designed is we have a very um, sort of like wavy path that the, the robot travels on. So the objective is kind of always moving back and forth. And then we have a lot of very direct routes across the map that the players can take. And because of that, it, it allows players to take a lot of shortcuts, circle around the enemy team, um, and it creates a lot of these flanking opportunities. Um, with five players, there's just one less person you kind of have to kind of keep in the in in your mind's focus and and kind of like worrying about where they're going to show up at any time um, and so it's settled down a little bit i still think it has 
that dyna dynamic nature that we've always loved about push, it's just a little bit easier to, to kind of understand. Fast paced. I think that's uh, yes. that's kind of the way I would put it. Like you have uh, a lot of the buildings you can go through, different types of routes you can take. Uh, I'm I'm excited. Let's jump into map number two. This will be uh, Toronto. This will be Push. Uh, this is the map that we actually saw uh, back at BlizzCon. Uh, we all had a chance to play. Uh, it was awesome then. I I'm excited to see some of the, like the the flanking characters. You can kind of get like an overhead oh, yeah. view of the map now and see. Know, your your tracers your genjis on this type of map reaper is the one to watch for i think uh, <laughs> it, has map. reaper been tearing it up <laughs> yeah it's really, so really is good. this map the same as it was back at blizzcon um or has there been any alterations to it um it's it's virtually the same um yeah when when we had the map at blizzcon it's um, it was Yo, Jacoby, thanks for the tier one, my dude. I appreciate it. Gobon, thanks for 100 bits. Now, but uh, we've Gundam, had the thanks for the prime. And Reagan's Railway, thanks for the two and five our, months. Um, resources yeah, I'm gonna fucking put alerts back on. Fuck it. Uh, you guys wanna fucking comment on this shit? Uh, I, I, I know, I see Stylos' face. Alerts are back on. He's just like smiling. I'm already tilted. He's like so giddy. Alerts are on again. It's so fun. Where I feel like, uh, I feel like Push is gonna add a different type of element to the game that, like, you know, escort and in a uh, hybrid like you mentioned are like the payload oriented maps and i think push kind of plays like that a little bit but there's so much more movement i feel Change like than both tweet. of those and just you take so I'm many not, different I'm fights not tweeting all over the map. Over. uh and i also love the fact that you just can't really tie on this map uh, i think uh one of the things uh like about assault is that you can you know you have like these like long like battles and then it's a draw and you're just like oh, i wanted to uh, i mean i may maybe even be okay taking a loss there you know but like uh th this you definitely get a winner yeah definitely and I, I really like game modes where the actual objective and the mechanics help pace out the the speed of gameplay and it was really really hard for us to do that with 2 cp you can have incredibly long matches in 2 cp no 100 percent like right. really quick blowouts like really um and it just came chance. down to what the two teams were doing and the game mode itself wasn't really doing right. this is 100 percent the way 100 some more watch like, or in has to do with it uh, and so 110 percent and you know why um, we i agree with it because call of duty league switched to five-man format actually helping to control the length of the match they switch their um, format and the, the pace of the match I'm on fire. yeah it's, uh you, you see on the clock the it's a uh, eight minute uh, synergy. clock with right now so yeah it is a uh, it is pretty fast i think it's definitely intended with you know some of these points in mind as uh it's a uh, poor lumpy gets taken out right off <laughs> right, right right off the rip lumpy was going on one of those flanks didn't turn out uh didn't turn out so well so, so the, does the uh, the bot unlock right away? Um, it takes about 30 seconds for it to unlock. And, and the reason we do that is we don't want a team to think that there's a certain amount of, of pressure really or to have all this pressure to get to it as quickly as possible. It. We want you Seems to be able like to be with strategic the with the way that you um, approach the, the bot in the middle of the map. And it's, it's very similar to the way that control works. So we can see the, the robot. He's got a name, right? Yeah, his name is TWO. <laughs> uh, that's good. It's, uh, we, we see uh, some, some Genji play in action. Is Yeah, you see like all the buildings you can kind of come from. Players, you know, up above to the side. I think you can definitely see that like, you know, fast paced. It, it, it looks uh, you know, way more like you can as a DPS player just kind of go off to the side, make a play, try and make a, you see here, they're going right for the supports. Yep. Yeah, and, and the map, it, there's still a main path in push. Yeah. And it's really important for us to have that in all of our in, in all of our map types. Um, but there are a lot of ways to get around that and to get through it. And that's what creates a lot of these opportunities. Going for the remake kill. Can't blame him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, it, yeah, no, I'm here, watching yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm fixated on the gameplay. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, this looks... This looks really deathmatchy, this does. Like, we're just, you know, they're just going in, they're having a, a good old brawl, and then obviously the... No, 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 don't say deathmatch and brawl. It's deathmatch, not match. brawl, it's deathmatch. It's every single time, and it's just... It, it, to be honest, it looks fairly similar to what I played back at BlizzCon all those years ago. Just with yeah, one I less think... tank. <laughs> it's yeah, it's just, it's just... This is yeah, not easier yeah, to follow. There's literally way more chaotic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, 
uh, I'm I'm somebody who uh, I play a ton of DPS, like, and I'm excited that minutes. maybe not everybody will run around in like a death ball, and I'll be able to kind of like play <laughs> tracer and go off to the side and make a play. I noticed too uh, the green health over Lucio here. Oh yeah. Uh, what is that on know. the UI now? I actually completely forgot about that. So many changes. <laughs> <There's a beat. laughs> I was like, I was like, uh, sound barrier doesn't give green health when I do it. <laughs> right. So that's something um, we're, we're changing up. I, you know, like everything's work in progress. It's possible to change, although we're pretty happy with it right now. Um, this is a change to uh, what we kind of call over health. This is like a larger system, which is, you know, on Overwatch One, you can have over armor and over shields, depending on who's giving it to you. Much like you can have normal health and shields and armor. Um, so, you know, once we started getting into trying to create clarity and make sure you know, the game's very readable in all these senses, it, you know, like I mentioned with uh, Zenyatta's UI and everything. Um, that came up too is like, you know, it's possible to get, especially you get into like PVE talents and stuff like that, your health bar can get really colorful really fast. Like, you could have, you know, health and then armor and then shields and then over health, armor and shields. You could literally have six <laughs> segmented colored health. And it was like, I can't even understand what I'm looking at right now. This is like so insane. So it's we, we ended up um, condensing all of the over. I'm not unmuting myself to talk uh, to him on either because I don't want to like if his stream is being more positive, but I don't want to so, infect him. But I know it's kind of, it kind I'm of sorry, guys. I can't be positive EMP, about this. I literally can't. Shields, like I'm, I genuinely, I genuinely even said when I first heard, I want to see what it looks just, like and try. I genuinely want to fucking try, but it's it's just awful. Like nonsense. Like how are you looking at this and saying this is easier to follow and looks fun? You know, you see somebody with green. It's literally 4v4 like, okay, deathmatch throw in a tank. Like a drain, that's it. You know the fucking arcade mode so, that's 4v4 um, deathmatch? Uh, it's that. literally just, it's that Deacon without the tanks. Back and forth, but uh, I noticed before there was like a circle. So is there like kind of uh, capture points, like progress? Does that change the respawns at all? How does that work on push? Yeah, it does. So the there robot so starts in the middle of the map and it pushes those, um, like the, those we red barricades flash. in this front of it. Um, and you can use those to kind the of like in world see what so your high water mark is. No and if, if the backs. robot's able to push it to the checkpoint, um, it will unlock a forward spawn room for the, the team that was able to do it. You can kind of see it just off to the left here behind Reinhardt. Um, so if the attacking team can push it over there, they'll Dude, unlock watch any of these tanks. And it gives them a and big I, And I really am not flaming like the players, okay? The like, I map. don't mean, I'm not trying to be an asshole to, like, the players playing the game. Uh, but neither tank has made a single impactful play the, the uh, entire game. Not one. I don't even uh, think if any of them have gotten a kill. Yeah, but there is one. Yep, there is an additional detail has, there. It's real talk. Has, to be has either tank to gotten a fucking kill yet? Before you lose oh, your forward spawn. Okay. One. And we actually started it the way um, that you described it, but a lot of times the robot could just move back and forth in. across this one checkpoint. <laughs> And yeah. it got, like, and I've already been playing one for a fucking year, so now I'm going to make it two. So we, we kind of gave you a grace <laughs> period in there, or made it a little bit stickier um, by by forcing him to return to the middle. Yeah, that's a good call. I can imagine if that was the case now. Yeah, you would have like, if I spawn this one second, I would spawn close and then like Stylosis spawns the next second and he's far away. Yep. And I, I mean, that happens in Overwatch, you know, um, but it was just, it was way too blatant. This with double that. bubble Zarya is sick. <laughs> <laughs> she is incredible. I love what? her. She's not incredible though, because if you just run she's fucking like, Widow, Hanzo, in, she literally is useless. Uh, we watched her on the last fucking she map. She literally didn't exist. Like more so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. So you, you have the same bubbles you had before, but they're, yeah, yeah. they're both using shared charges. So yeah, we, we found that's that the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Like actually, I use it. She tends to be at higher charge more often. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is a good example, I guess. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Oh so my. it's actually even a lot of this. Dude. I can find myself like, you know, sending a message to people. Well, what was your average energy? Would you say? Or how else? It's like that's not kind of tearing it up. That seems a little insane. So, balancing oh, it TBD, looks, but it looks so fun though. I mean, as somebody who loves to play Zarya, like I now understand uh, why I we saw all PVE the should have less con. I, I actually Zarya understand would just it. Just automatically double bubble themselves and right. everybody <laughs> else. Think that actually, for themselves. Like, yeah. Let's just run in and double bubble ourselves. But then you start to think like, actually, if I save two and you know genji pulls out his blade on my team 
I think if I double shield him and we, you know, I save that up, uh, that's going to be oh, yeah, kind of ridiculous. Think, so. Oh yeah. I didn't even think of that. Like, uh, yeah, not just applying the two bubbles to yourself, but you could, because they share the charge, you could theoretically like bubble again, G blade, and then bubble him again, right? Yeah. Or a ferret. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Really well. So, so many, is, uh, so many different ways. Like, yeah. So this is like as I just just kind of recently put in, um, coming off the back of the. Um, April first stuff and, and seeing how we feel about it and it's um been pretty interesting. I, I, I'm certainly concerned about it in some cases, but it, it also leads to some really awesome play. So I'm kind of letting it rock for a while and see what we get, see how it feels. Work in progress, but yep. I, I like the progress on that one. Design, <laughs> so 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 uh, OT. How does the rule here work? I guess they they have to push all the way to the end, or do they just have to, want to beat tank when the time of the blue the team? If you get they just play. need to beat the time of the blue team. So, the the win condition for push is whoever has pushed it the furthest by the end of time. Well, Washington isn't in a great state. Even got content for fucking happen, or if you're able legitimately to years. It's like, it, but apparently, it's in a good state is. because it has two fucking tanks in it. So now they're unlocking <laughs> their forward spawn room right here. Uh, the the, the tragedy strikes for the blue team. Thanks. Yeah, they need to Overwatch. stay near the robot, uh, I believe, to keep pushing. Yes. Uh, yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, so you can have, you know, the 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 good old blunder where everybody walks off the objective and two, two just looks <laughs> <all> sad. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. about. <laughs> this is trash. There's no oh, points. Oh. I. Yeah, I imagine these games go right down to the wire. Uh, I just mean, as we saw definitely there. hectic there towards the end. This is this is going to be quite good for Overwatch League. I'd imagine this is. Uh, mm, I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed watching that. Yeah, you say it's good for yeah, Overwatch League. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with these stylos for two fucking point, seconds. Like, uh, yeah, when you think Here's about, the thing. Like, you know, Do you know how many fucking Overwatch League players like, just oh, lost their job like, does it still because this that, one like, change? You know, big, like, Do you know how many fucking energy, tank like players literally are going to lose their job because like, this one change? You see it there, I think, think about that for two seconds. Push. Yeah, real fucking good for Overwatch League, dude. The, real fucking good. The game looks trash. These fucking changes look trash. Not only for competitive ranked players, quick play ranked players might like it. And probably just put out a fucking job. At least 20 fucking tank players in the Overwatch League. Good job, dude. Yeah, really, really. Really? Make, it's got that Overwatch music where yeah. it kind of adds to the, <laughs> the suspense of it all. So hard that they yeah, and to push, it. this happens in push sure a lot. It goes to overtime I fear um, we do. more often than it doesn't. And it was a decision that we made when we were developing the mode um, where we had to decide what was more important for push. Was it for one team to be able to get the robot all the way to the end of the map? Or is it more important for the robot to be moving back and forth in the map? Um, because it's it's really hard to get both of those. And so we think that this this mode plays better to have it moving back and forth more often. And so the the mode mechanics and the map design is all kind of tailored to have that. And it get, and it makes it like really, really exciting. Thanks, Contra. Dude, don't even worry about being mean anymore. Yeah, we'll figure like it out. Fast we'll be fine. Moving, fast yeah, flow we're content creators. Combat, we can make right? Overwatch content think, in different uh, ways. We can make other content for other games. We'll be okay. House, right? like, but these are people that have put just years of their lives in. Kind of to grind to become per professional players. Like, like we saw Zarya and there on push, like it's they're not trying to save a few bucks. Kind of think we're so like have a, the league format changed? Like have that, the game format changed? Like, she looked unkillable all the time. Cringe. She crazy. Yeah. She's really scary in this form for sure. And you know, I think that's kind of what we're thinking for a lot of these, uh, you know, sort of off tanky kind of characters before, you know, Roadhog and we need and, uh, people need to be loud about this. This because it's it could. They even said they're open to talking. Noting that. We're not, okay, like, they're, they're people. They're not assholes. Making them super aggro. They're it's not like assholes. Pushing more some of the more aggro content. tanks and making them a little tankier. So, I mean, a lot of we all just want the best. People notice, but um, but this is has this is nonsense. More sort of matrix juice in the can, so she can use it a lot more. So that's an example of where we didn't just like give her more missiles or something like that and let her go kill everybody. It's like she can actually protect her team a little more. So she slides a little bit closer towards you know the the, the, the defensive route. There's probably players out there who want those missiles, but I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy, there. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy that it's not happening. But uh, Stylosa, final thoughts, man. Uh, excited to have you on. What do you think? Yeah, no, I'm. I'm. I am very impressed with that. Much more impressed than I thought I would be. Um, it's been so long since I've seen push in action, um, and it. Yeah, it definitely looks better five v five.
like yeah i don't know that that that's i, I want to see more i want to see more of it so like, you know <laughs> I, well, I feel half well, done but i just get in one game <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah you know, silos is not gonna leave the call he's just gonna yeah, he's no, just gonna, gonna, gonna uh, <laughs> plant, his, plant his stake down and just hang out but uh guys we're gonna go for a quick break i don't want to be mean to silos i don't want to be mean to silos join the show give his thoughts on some of the things he sees go over ridiculous. some of the stuff that's going on with the tanks you don't want to miss it stay tuned <laughs> Come on, Super. I have so I have so much faith in Super here. Come on, please, dude. Please, dude. Don't don't leave us hanging. Don't leave us hanging here. Is molding? No, everyone who plays this game should be molding. To be honest with you, because your ass standing on fucking point now. Your tank is useless. You don't get to cap position, and you don't get to take gunfights. You're playing TDM now. Congrats, dude. Good luck. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Overwatch 2 PvP developer live stream. I'm Mitch Leslie, and already we've seen a ton of what is in the works for Overwatch 2 PvP. There's a lot to take in, obviously, with new maps, new game types, and changes, of course, to some of the core mechanics of the game. So we're going to rehash a couple of things, of course, over the next few maps, but we want to drill down on a couple of the things we've already talked about so far. And to help me do that now, we'll be joining our Overwatch League superstar matthew super delicia of course is uh everybody's favorite neighborhood main tank how you doing super obviously uh big news today i'd love to get some of your initial thoughts on it yeah uh, thanks for having me first of all um i mean the tank changes that's definitely the one that you know kind of stuck out to me uh the fact that you know only one tank because i'm a tank player and uh, you know my experience with tank you know it goes up it goes down mm -hmm. sometimes you get bullied uh as as a tank with two um, so I'm, you know, I'm curious to see how that's going to progress and change to make it so that it's a lot easier for one tank to be, uh, you know, work Fair. properly and, and not have as many struggles. Fair. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I think you watch in any sort of tank player stream right now. You can sort of see. His mic's not doing too hard. And also some of the downs here. Obviously, we saw, you know, maybe some more power being shifted in the direction of the tanks, right? You know, we saw Reinhardt with the double fire strikes. He's got some more of that charge control and the Winston changes. What was your thoughts uh, when you first saw the fact that Winston now has a bit of longer range uh <laughs> equipment to bring to the fight yeah i thought that was uh a little bit interesting i also like that they grabbed the zarya from the experimental um i mean at least in my ch when i played the experimental i thought that the cool now needed to be shorter on that um but i, I like that in general they're trying to give more power if it's going to be just one tank uh because i feel like otherwise a lot of tanks like you know zarya and diva uh they would kind of struggle because but they're the way they're designed right now i feel like they weren't really, um, you know, made to be played solo, if that makes sense. Um, but now I feel like if they if they do the proper changes, then I think it could actually be pretty good. Okay, that's cool, uh, actually. Absolutely. You saw that there as cool. well a couple of the changes. We mentioned Winston's maze. We haven't really talked about it. It's definitely part of a, a 
a wider conversation that we can sort of tap into uh, in a moment. And of course, uh, we'll be rejoined in, in just a moment by some members of our development team as well to maybe add some context and field some more uh, of these questions here. We, we already heard a little bit about uh, Diva and uh, sort of the way that she was sort of tweaked. So I want to take this opportunity to bring back in Jeff Goodman, of course, the lead hero designer on Overwatch 2 and Dion Rogers, our associate art director. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here. Of course, now you have a bona fide main tank player at the professional level in the room here. And uh, super, of course, a chance to share some of your thoughts. But gentlemen, overall, it definitely feels like the role of the tank changes vastly now in this, la in this landscape. Not only is it just one tank, but maybe some of the roles or things you're expected to do in the game may have shifted. Yeah, I think absolutely. I, I mean, it's sort of like, it, you know, definitely in the past, it's somewhat true as well that you're definitely leading your team. But I think now you're doing it kind of by yourself and you can really sort of pace the game out, at least for your team, exactly how you want it to go. Um, which, you know, some so I think some people are sort of... Um, Internally, we've had people like kind of worried about that pressure a little bit like, oh, man, that's a lot of like, I have a lot of responsibility now. But I think as you start to play it and you just realize that, wow, I actually have a lot more tools to do this than before, though. I mean, I'm, I'm a lot stronger. I can actually survive these encounters a lot more, especially with healers both focusing on me now and everything. So um, it ends up just kind of being empowering and super fun when you get in there, um, especially obviously with the ability to cancel Reinhardt Charge and stuff. So you don't have to overcommit and uh, you can poke a little bit with Winston. So you don't have to overcommit with him either. So a lot more control. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It, earlier I mentioned I used to be a Brian main as well. Nice. And these changes. So <laughs> it took me a while to get used to the changes, but it, it, I agree with what Jeff said. There's a lot more choice and tactical decisions you're making as the tank now. That it just feels fun and, and really good for the team. I love that you mm. sort of mentioned uh, Ryan High here as well because I, I don't know if something that we maybe haven't covered a great depth so far, but because the role of the tank maybe changes or maybe it becomes more focused now to some degree. Um, you know, Reinhardt, obviously, we've known him to have a, a sort of a passive ability on live where he's less affected by some of this crowd control or knockback stuff. Oh, yeah. I want to talk a bit about role passives because that's something that is, uh, you know, is coming to Overwatch 2 and really sort of sets some of these roles apart from each other a bit more, Jeff. Yeah, so this is um, a new thing coming to Overwatch 2. It's, um, for those that don't know, it's every role so tanks, DPS, and support get a passive or a set of passives related to their role. Um, so in this case, you can see uh, tanks have a couple things uh, associated with them. One is they're reduced, they get knockback uh, reduction on them, so you can't knock them around quite so easily, which thematically makes sense too. But if you're a tank player, you're playing against, you know, Lucio and, you know, whoever else, it can be really infuriating sometimes just be flying around all the time, not being able to control your character as well. Um, so that's... Uh, one of the things they get. And the other thing they get that we, we heard about tanks, especially tanks like Roadhog who don't have a barrier, is people feel like they generate too much ultimate for the enemy team, especially if you're trying to be aggressive, which is what we're trying to incentivize, that you know, you come in, you do maybe you cancel charge and try to get hammer swings in there to build your ult, but like did you was that a worthwhile trade off if the enemy shot you so much that they built more yeah. ult than you did? So what we've done is shooting an enemy tank generates less ult for you. So your enemies get less ult for shooting you across the board for all tanks now. Um, and these are obviously the values we're, we're, we're tuning, but you can kind of see it here a little bit. Um, you know, depending on who you're shooting, you can generate a lot of assault. Um, and then for DPS players, uh, the role passive they get right now, and this is something we're definitely iterating on and tuning maybe even more aggressive than the other ones, is they get a movement speed bonus just across the board, which you can see here. Um, you can see it's not like massive. It's not like everyone's going to be soldiers sprinting around the map or anything. Um, <laughs> but we have found so far, like, I mean, our players probably attest this too. Like, any kind of movement speed changes to anything is huge. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is why Lucio was considered sort of like, you know, mandatory for so long because he was the only one bringing move speed. Like, granted, he's a lot more move speed. But, um, so, you know, we started a little higher. We were tuning it back a little bit. We're trying to find the number here. But um, it's really interesting in what it allows you to do as far as even just like basic map traversals. You can just flank a lot easier and not you don't have to commit as so much time to the flank and to get back. Uh, but also, like, there are times where, let's say you're like Reaper or something. Uh, and you commit your resources to, to get at an enemy Zenyatta or something, and he's trying to run around a corner just to get away from you, and, you know, you could just catch him. You, I mean, give it enough, a little bit of time, you'll just get up close to him and, and you know, close that gap. So uh, that's pretty powerful, uh, even though it's kind of a little subtle there. Um, and then the, the, the support changes is, this is probably something that 
on a mains, especially you're going to love to hear. But the support players all get automatic health regen after a certain amount of time of not taking damage, which is basically Mercy's passive. <laughs> right, exactly. So it's Mercy's passive, but a, a lot less of a degree, and Mercy's passive will still exist as like, a much stronger right. version. Um, but this is still there, so you know, it, you know, I always feel like you're an auto player. You know, obviously when you're really low, you're like, I guess I'll nade myself. But sometimes you're missing like 50 health, and you're like, eh, am I gonna waste my nade just to heal myself? Where's my other healer? Usually like, the other healers are in like, front of you as well, so like they have to turn around right, to see you. Right. Exactly. So um, that's been really awesome, especially for us um, designing new heroes, because I feel like we're in this position every time we design a new healer. It's like, okay, well. We have to come up with some mechanic that they can heal themselves because it's like ridiculous that you can't like, you know, shoot yourself in the foot or whatever. It was always on a joke, but um, so now now they have these sort of like, we don't have to worry about that anymore unless we wanted to add something like a Mercy's case or Thanks. even Zenyatta's case for Did shields. Shields are generate on top of this, so you'll actually get double we regen Halo uh, if your if your shields are regening. So they're th those heroes still retain their sort of extra regeneration bonuses, but it's a lot nicer for Ana. Now, of course, on the horizon, we, we're going to be showing more of our, of our new maps here in Overwatch 2. But something I noticed that kind of you kind of snuck past us here, some uh, some footage of May. So, oh, yeah. this because May seems like she's been changed yeah. pretty drastically, at least uh, in terms of how she yeah. operates. So, Probably this is actually Halo kind of the iceberg, and that's some changes I can yeah, talk about. Zoomed, but yeah. May was the, the first one we sort of checked into the build and we wanted to play with for a long time. So, if you notice here, she doesn't actually fully freeze the enemy here at all. She still slows them. But Thank she doesn't God. never never go to a stun all <laughs> the way. Thank God. The compensation, of course, is does a lot more damage. So it's. I love how they hit us with this fucking boom, and then they're like trying to like show like slow. little things like, oh, look, we took away this thing. You guys, escape, you guys hated that thing, right? Um, but you never actually get in that lockdown state. Like, okay, well, here's the free headshot. I guess I'm dead. Um, to, you know, and, and for her, it's really interesting too because she still has, at least right now, she still has that sort of cleave effect, the piercing that can hit multiple targets. So and you're doing so much damage now. Oh, so we don't take that out of the live game because you wanted to use that as an excuse to all this put it in Overwatch 2 because then now it's like, hey. Piercing through a tank or... You know, yeah, you might not like this stuff. Like that. But look what we did. We did the thing you asked for. Um, so it's kind of an interesting... Uh, still has an interesting back Fucking and forth kill me, dude. secondary fire as well. But as I mentioned, it's kind of the tip of the iceberg because... Um, what we're really playing around with, and this isn't actually in this build, this is something we're, we've been experimenting with, uh, hasn't quite been successful enough to quite put it in the build right. yet, but this is something we're looking at, is just generally looking at crowd control across the whole game. Like, where do we want it to be? Who should have it? Because um, we could certainly are, we've gotten feedback over time, we totally understand and respect, like, sometimes you're playing against, you know, the ultimate CC team with, like, <laughs> May and, I don't know, McCree yeah. and whatever, and especially as a tank, I'm sure you're well aware yeah. of this. And you're just like, oh, my God, I hate my life. Um, so yeah. we, <laughs> we've been experimenting with, um, like, just generally setting guidelines. Like, okay, tanks should probably have CC. They're all about space control, and, you know, they have that role to be able to earth shatter or, you know, create, create that um, those great opportunities. But should... As many DPS heroes have CC as May, maybe McCree doesn't need to stun, you know, and, and so we're looking at all of, all of these, especially the, mostly actually really the DPS and the supports. Um, currently, like, again, this is all like really hot off the presses because it's not even in this okay. build, but um, we're, we're probably thinking that like Ana's pretty cool right now. P people are generally pretty cool with her sleep. Um, there's a skill shot element you involved. Can give me one there's more sleep, a lot of. If you want. <laughs> just keep going. I'm not like a you fan of sleep cards. It just kind of <laughs> hits everybody. <laughs> It gave me cool talent ideas, actually. Um, but uh, so, like, that, you know, we're still playing. That one seems pretty cool. But, like, McCree, probably not so cool, even though he's sort of, like, ingrained on McCree as his son. That's, like, what he's about. But it's like, okay, well, what if he didn't? What if he had something else? Or what if it worked mm -hmm. a different way? Um, and, of course, that almost has as many ramifications as the tank changes. Because yeah. it's like, now we're talking about, okay, we take all the CC away, Tracer, Doomfist, Wrecking Ball. These heroes are just, like, out of control now, right? Because, like, they're sort of heavily countered by CC. So... And we got to go back and change those heroes, of course, as well as the compensation for the CC heroes. So that is something that's like heavily in progress. And uh, I'm hopeful that um, I think we'll be able to get some reductions in there. I'm sure, sure I think a lot of our fans would like to see it. Um, so trying to, you know, a lot of these changes, including the tensions, are trying to get back to like, you know, core shooter yeah. roots. It, it, um, it definitely feels like, Jeff, um, you know, we, we were at points we were wondering, like, is this game like a MOBA? Like, how important is that positioning, right, the tactical, right. the ability usage element? How important is the. The, the, the shooting uh, element uh, it's not uncommon for you know it, you know for developers to say this game's all you know it's about the gunplay but as the game evolves and you have these ideas and you bring these new abilities in that it can sort of mm -hmm. change that 
Super. Um, usually, mate, it's hard to get you to uh, stop talking, but uh, you've had a moment to absorb <laughs> some of this. Let's let, let's talk about how you think the role of the main tank or tank in this regard is, is going to change in maybe an Overwatch 2 and, and sort of some of your thoughts about where the CC is going. How's it going to feel? You know, you have a rock hard mental, dude. Like uh, the way you, you sit on that stream and you just go, go, go. But tell us how you think this sort of changes. Yeah, uh, so that was kind of... A a big worry of mine was like you say one tank and i'm thinking current overwatch where you know you're playing against a brig and then an anna and then a mccree mm -hmm. and a may and then you know you're stun locked for 17 seconds then you want to alt f4 um but if they're you know if it is you know looking at the rest of the 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 cc in the game and you're looking to reduce that across the board and then on top of that you're adding more utility to tanks i think that's you know it's going to make it easier to do that um because I, I i i have felt that cc is kind of um it's a little out there sometimes you know it's it's not always the most fun to play against um and especially for me i always felt that displacement cc was almost more egregious than like stuns because like if you get booped by like a lucio and then, like a brig whip shot or a ball that can like swing back and forth i always felt that that was more um like annoying and frustrating to play against because this is fair this you, is fair you couldn't really control that like you kind of just got knocked everywhere and that was just the way it was um are those being like looked at as well as stuns or is it like everything across the board? Yeah, definitely. But the nice thing is we have this new tuning knob of the tank passives to say, you know, if we still oh, want Lucio true. to be able to boop enemies off cliffs or something and still mm -hmm. leave that strong, but we still we still think tanks are being booped too much, we can just dial that like knockback reduction. No, that was the most fair thing he probably so could have said. You know, they, they're less affected by it. So it's, it's a nice place to be. Absolutely. All right, that's that's nice to hear. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're, we're drilling down pretty heavily into like you know, what it, what it means to be a tank player, and I think talking about still it absolutely good, not. I, I just, it won't happen. More, it will literally won't happen because um, I mean, what he on, said. We have. Chat. I mean, I can see it here in a little preview. What screen, he said. Our next map is, is what really Jeff said. It really captures, I think, the was that if they tuned all that stuff back, of, of then they'd have to look at heroes like Doomfist, Tracer, Ball, and they're can't they're they are countered by CC. So he's saying that they don't want to really change those heroes, and the only reason they would even have to change those heroes because they won't have to give it all the CC. Spent the part of their life there. So it's pretty. So it's not going to happen. Kind of dive They'll tone it down, if anything. This Overwatch version of. But then they had to tone those heroes down too. That's what they're saying is, is there's trade-offs. Vibrant club, you get to visit and where Lucio's club is. If anything is taught um, us about Overwatch, is when there's major trade-offs, so they don't want to touch it. barbecue place, you know, it's another map. We're just having a lot of fun creating different details and and, and this aspirational version of this location. For you like, you understand, too. like. He probably he can't a, just go flame a, them a on stream like that can't, doesn't work not that he probably would anyways but fun carnival float. that was the most fair thing that could have been said so we're just having fun with these masks i think the cool brazilian barbecue I, I still think though it's it's not gonna work because uh, what they're saying is they could tone other stuff down the but then if they tone the other like stuff down the other heroes have to be toned as well I mean, and there's so many things they'd have to tune in a row that would take literally years to rebalance credited for is there can you uh, obviously i don't want you to give away too much too much of the story but is there a context here like wh where are the attackers starting from because i see some beach i see different landscapes sort of getting fleshed out here as we go through the map okay so the defense actually starts in lucio's home so yeah obviously Ooh. there's a story layer to overwatch that we want to tell so mm -hmm. lucio plays a big part of that so uh, you get a little hint of where we're going with that, but we're not talking too heavily. Josh, about why it. drop a tank and throw the game into an also, entire Lucio's balance on its head? Always, it's kind of a community. Hi, place, we're so on the same place. page. If it was real, people can come there for free. He, he's a community guy. We wanted to showcase this with this gigantic kind of sci fi club he has. Um, yeah, it's. It's connected to the story of Overwatch. Uh, you, we'll just have to wait and see how closely Rio plays into the game. You saw a little bit at BlizzCon a uh, while ago, but um, there's definitely more. Right, so, this yeah, so I uh, I do have a question for Jeff. Sorry to cut you off, uh, no, Mitch, but I do have a question if that's fine. So if I'm pretty sure like way back in the day, there was like an interview that I read that was like, five was too small and seven was too big for, yeah, for, the, yeah. for the roster limit. And then six was perfect. But like, I'm kind of curious, like where along, like the Overwatch timeline did that philosophy kind of change? You know who like, said was it that? Chat? Was it like Jeff? Learning I know that article he's better? talking about. Like Jeff you know, said that. Ever, all of this, yeah. I mean, 
Can we get a mod check? I mean, we've got so Can we get a mod check for Jeff? Can we get a mod like, check, Jeff? Before Hello? everything, I mean, you could just play five Winston's. In fact, we had an internal tournament where that was the yeah. strategy. <laughs> the five Winston's and a Zenyatta. <laughs> it was sort of like, oh my god, this seems like maybe a problem, or is this cool? We don't know. Uh, so, like, obviously, when you're building really any game, you try to make the best judgments for what you have and what you're playing, but once you have the game in the wild and get in everybody else's hands and it marinates for a while and you're making changes, like, your opinion on this stuff definitely changes, so I think over time... Uh, they cut away because they, they just watched the Winston changes, explode. Still keeping an open so mind they cut away from it? Are you kidding me? Doing some of these kind of changes and then coming Overwatch 2, you were just like, let's revisit everything. And that was definitely one of the major core decisions of Overwatch 1 we were really looking forward to revisiting. And at that point, we were just like, yeah, maybe this is actually just much better. Maybe we were wrong all along. Although, the people always say, uh, it's kind of a design thing, people say, you're not necessarily wrong at the time just because you were wrong in retrospect. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. See, here's the thing. But, uh, if one tank feeds, yeah. right, so there's still a really good chance you win that fight. Because or, uh, if they were low and you get another, if you trade a tank right right after, Taylor. you can still yeah, win the fight. What this is out, showing kind of is if that uh, tank yeah, so dies, they immediately Taylor, lose. This is, I mean, I'm no stranger to peacocking. Look at what I'm wearing. But this is uh, this is great. You want to talk about like, I get, and, and toxicity and stuff isn't something I really talk about too much. Like, oh, that'll cause toxicity. That's not something that's big on like something I've talked about too much. But what to I'm be honest with you, is real in, people are going to be uh, micromanaged to all right? hell. It's going to be insane. The second phase, all of a sudden, it's less about chokes and overpasses, and it's just this, 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 this jumble of all these buildings and so much high ground here. Really feel like yeah. the way you play, the map changes drastically here. Yeah, that, no, that was... Oh, you can go uh, ahead. Oh, that was just one thing. We're, we're trying more of this phased approach with the visuals and the gameplay as we move through the space. So you saw it was a bit more open. As you get the payload, there's a feeling of change in gameplay and art as well. So this visual progression as, as well as gameplay is much more clear in some of the newer maps we're working on. Yeah, one thing that I maybe it's just the, maybe it's just a coincidence, but I feel like a lot of uh, a lot of chokes in 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 Overwatch One, like specifically like I think like Hanamura first or like going through King's Row second, they're very like tight and like, it's like perfect for like a Reinhardt shield to spread across and it can be like, you know, a real pain to get through those sometimes because you feel like you really only have like one way to go through. But I'm seeing at least in the other two maps that we looked at a lot more, uh, a lot more flanks and ways to access the point. And I think that's overall better for the design because I feel like when you, especially on Hanamura first, like going through that choke is kind of, you know, it, it can be a real, it can be real not fun sometimes like if, if, you, if you're just not clicking or if it's just, you know, they have a, a hard comp that, that you just can't counter and I think it's just better overall. Yeah, if we want to give players more options to solve a problem, say they're stuck at the choke, they have a few more options to break through basically. They, they don't have to rely on the tank Go ahead. powering through this time, but yeah, that's, that's always the thing. We're trying to improve the options the players have to solve. Situations. Are there going to be previous maps in Overwatch 1 that will be reworked, or...? Uh, we don't know Can yet. Can you not say? Is that secret, no. or...? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, okay, fair no, enough. No, the answer to that is no, they haven't so even thought of that. You look, you've got, you've got one less hero on the battlefield. Uh, you, they your just, maps are... He just, he just talked about how they thought about in, a design philosophy. Bigger, right? large, they'll change all the know, heroes' so CC and how they'll change... If uh, they change the hero's CC, then they have to balance other heroes. That is not a hidden I secret. The is, They've right? never thought of that. Sense where, like, you know, it, it, if you go too far one direction, right, it can seem quite barren. But here, like, everything, there's, there's attention to detail everywhere, right? There's so many. They never thought of that. Crisscrossing ways of approaching the point. Except like Horizon or, um, in Paris. But Maybe they thought of that. But, but it, it definitely. Like Hanamura is a great uh, example. That probably hasn't even. That had probably never even came across their mind. Right now, it definitely feels bigger, right? Is that ever a consideration trying to balance that, the sort of size and the majesty of it all? Uh, yeah, it, it's definitely more detailed than before, and again, the more options, the, there's more passageways and buildings for players to, to move through and build strategies from, but ultimately the maps are in a fairly similar size to the previous, you're just seeing a lot more detail out of mm -hmm. the Overwatch 2 engine, we have a lot of cool upgrades that allow us to do more while keeping a smooth performance, but yeah, it's something which is we're cool, which is exciting, but the scale of maps and and how it feels to move through the space, visually as well as gameplay-wise. 
this really has like a Dorado feel almost, right? We have sort of payloads sort of moving through under. The thing I'm are, realizing more than there anything are levels here. Not just is even though these players aren't like that good, obviously, like you could tell, like, you know, they're just, like, they're not very high level, obviously. Mm -hmm. The DPS players and the support yeah, players are actually ground, making right impactful ground, plays so here and there here. sometimes. <laughs> the tank players have made no impact. Like, Zero. Nada. So if you're talking about in you know, perspective really scale, if, you can hold it, it's fantastic, but it's just really hard to if hold they also the aren't making any plays, routes, but the DPS can and they're all around the same rank so, and the support can, uh, it's, it ends up being like that tells me either tank is now extremely difficult to play. Tanks a, just sit on B, the or just completely in, in, um, unimpactful. It's so powerful. You can see where Widow is right there. Or C. So you have sight on everything up there. Th there's something that I'm not so seeing yet. Is, uni is Universal ult charge nerfed, or is it just as a result of the tank changes that it seems like people are getting their ult slower? It's mostly just the tanks, and we don't have... Mm. They're probably... I can't remember exactly all the individual changes, but I think we probably adjusted a few heroes here and there. Um, may have gone up or down on their, on their cost, but... Um, it's almost entirely just the tank changes. You generate a lot of ult off tanks. Right? Oh, I'm figuring it out. Right, just go Widow be Widow. There's less tank to shoot as well, so it makes it right, a true. little bit harder. Although looking at Widow is an interesting example. We haven't adjusted the snipers too much yet, but we're keeping a really close eye on them because a lot of what sort of controls snipers is the that fact there's all these barriers you can't shoot through. Mm -hmm. And you're mm -hmm. playing as Widow against a comp that is, you know, like a, back in the day when it was like Wrecking Ball only or something like that. Like, you definitely are a lot more powerful, so... Uh, we have to yeah. make sure that they're not, they don't get out of control. I feel, because I feel like on some of these choke points, it's definitely a lot more wider than, than, than some other maps. And I feel like, uh, you know, if unchecked, some certain Widows could do a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's just yet another thing we got to keep an eye on with the t change like this. Right. I mean, you know, we, we talk about how sort of tanks have changed now to sort of allow them to be more multi-purpose or sort of fill a broader spectrum of roles. Obviously, like... You know, when you have a Reinhardt, you, you kind of know what the player is playing for, right? The shield creates space, right? You, you create space just because the shield exists. And for someone like Roadhog, um, they create space because of the threat of the hook, right? It's not even something that's necessarily, mm -hmm. it's implied threat, right? It's not um, exactly. so directly displayed. So, I mean, what is the idea for a tank? Do you still want there to be the mix of there sort of being that implied threat plus obviously a, a very visible threat? You know, has it changed the way you think about how tanks create spaces now? Obviously, all tanks have to be able to do that to some degree, regardless if they have a shield or not. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, it obviously uh, also impacts new hero design, working new heroes, how they're going to act with creating space and defending their team. Um, certainly looking at, uh, you know, Arisa's not being played here for a reason because we're looking at her really heavily. Sure. Um, any any hero that as sort of that, that just the really kind of heavy static slow defense are the ones we're kind of trying to hit the hardest first um and then you know just that alone already makes roadhog shine a little bit because he's not being compared to the huge barrier reinhardt um but certainly oh yeah literally, <laughs> should have healed there first probably but you know he went for it um yeah, so like, there's a lot of changes we can make now. Oh, what the, the hog made a that micro mistake? Really that all of his teammates um, were also the same level of all been making down, even uh, worse like mistakes. Oh wait, it's noticeable because uh, it's a solo tank. Um, maybe we could bring that back, uh, especially in a world where all the tanks are pretty aggressive. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't feel like it's super crazy. Uh, we still want to make sure there's enough like counterplay. You want to feel like I made him dodge the hook, and then we had no opportunity to attack because he just hooked again right afterwards. So it's certainly a balancing act, but um, a lot of the the tank. Uh, sort of tankiness can be just in the, the hero themselves now because if you get to go in and be threatening like with all this extra damage and just be hard to kill Spoon you're just creating space by existing <laughs> what an animal obviously wow that was really exciting super, i'm curious if you're well the tanks did a lot there to each other tank right and you know you, you'll play uh your main tank as we call it or off tank what, what is it that makes you sort of feel most powerful when you're playing tank Right, because obviously the, all the heroes offer something so different to each of them. But could you, could right. you narrow it down to something? Honestly, oh, Hogs is the most impressive I've seen out of all of them. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, well, I feel like a lot of it comes down to like Hog is by far the best tank I've seen so far, right? and a lot of that currently is kind of based off of the fact of what your second tank is doing, which is obviously, uh, you know, no longer a thing because mm -hmm. there's a removal. Um, and I feel like this is really gonna have to rely a lot more on like your support's keeping you a lot more alive as opposed mm -hmm. to like your off tank or secondary tank, you know, being in, in coordination with you. Um, because the supports now, they only have to focus on, on one tank in particular. Um, mm -hmm. As opposed to, you know, having to split it between two. 
And I, I feel like that's probably gonna have to give a lot more... Tanks are gonna have to play a lot more, I guess, assertive mm -hmm. because they can't really rely on on their other tank to, to make the decisions for them or like to you know help them out in that way i feel like it definitely changed i i know you know there's, there's a, a good handful of players who you know their, their selection of tank really boils down to their capacity to to deal damage uh you mm -hmm. know like a lot of time, like you got you you'll see them right you, you get these weird sort of sigma zaya comps or you see like a lot of people just like playing roadhog that's their favorite oh, thing does yeah, damage appreciate it. um you know, trying to make you know a, a player feel powerful. Hog is best tank in deathmatch. Hey, we have an intellectual in chat. Much more about game design. Oh so my. that's what I kind of wonder. You like no. outside of just doing that's totally what damage, I was getting at. Sort of balance a tank to make them feel powerful without just pumping numbers into their primary fight. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, I think that's probably a design philosophy uh, that I'm maybe not <laughs> qualified to talk about. Um, but that's actually, well, I don't know. That's I mean, because I wasn't actually asking you, but you can weigh in on it first. Okay, yeah, I'll stop speaking. That's good. No, that's good. I'll stop speaking. I agree with you this, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, a lot of it's, like, we're talking about with just options, and, like, you know, as you mentioned, like, you just want to make sure that, I mean, that's the, kind of the point of the Zarya change, is just giving her more flexibility and more options. So, I mean, it happens to be she also generates a crap lot more energy yeah. and is way scarier, does more damage in this case. Uh, we may have to rein that in a little bit. It, she was already running out on that last little bit there with like 80 percent and then 100 percent so it seems Thank you. pretty, pretty aggressive but fried, um, fuck am yeah I it's watch. definitely just trying to create um really interesting playmaking opportunities and so just strategic it. thought and i think that's where a lot of people kind of like to have the tanks uncle ro i don't really want to just the front as well. appreciate there it there are probably better options out there i don't think i don't think we're likely to make any kind of like sniper tank out there or anything like that because you know, there's a lot of uh, dan david thinks the front as well um we'd like to try to keep the tanks like like i was mentioning with the crowd control changes as an example of this we like to keep the tanks being the ones who are primarily able to do crowd control and that's also with only being one tank now it means still there's gonna be a lot less crowd control in the game uh, in general but still allow them to to sort of flex that particular element right so you talk about obviously taking a little bit of that away from me but obviously it's still something that you know you feel like you could include in the game it almost feels like it's a, you know, a more moderated approach to it. ryan and ryan and can, and, and hog are the only two tanks i've seen that have been like any somewhat of useful just means that there's you know now it's just that one hero on the battlefield that really is able to shiny new so much that outside of bacon things the two or three ones five different forms shit. that are coming in so it, it feels like almost exactly. responsibility as a as a as a tank player is is almost kicked up a notch there because you you got to be a jack of all trades yeah. in some case especially if crowd control gets reduced to a point where you're looking for a, to counter something specific like you're looking for yeah but now the, the, why is the stream talked about if we did this if we made it all like, cc like, better like really did they just get the idea during the stream and now they're like oh shit, that's pretty good game changer you're talking about that like we should do that like make sure it's up and you save it and try to eye on him um, and conversely, if you're a character who it's fucking really wild for, you know, like Reaper or something like that, wants to get his ult off, and you want to make you sure you're not going to get stunned, it's a lot easier to, to sort of track PvP now. Who, they're making who's the ingenious can stop you. you know, looking for their tank, looking for um, PVE only. He's on a visit. It's kind of like when you're Zarya trying to ult, and you're, you're watching TV really close because you don't want to have it eaten. And that's what most is. One hundred and ten percent. You are right. It's like that with more. One hundred and ten percent. You are right. This guy's nuts on Roadhog. Yeah. <laughs> even even with sort of yeah less knockback, Ryan obviously being as close as he was to the whole hog just sort of gets knocked away. Playing um, Ryan against Hog though is tough unless you like really know what you're doing. Loading into game, uh, sort of playing Overwatch, it sort of said like listen out for footsteps. Like the heavier footsteps mean your opponent is potentially oh, yeah. more dangerous to you. <laughs> but it definitely feels like <laughs> you know the weight of these weapons is much. More and they tried an experimental right, because they tried yeah, one three cool. two one time and people um, were like, like yeah this is stupid sounds extremely meaty <laughs> i love the weapon sounds yeah, yeah done such too. a great job and they uh, and like, especially like widow. soldier oh widow yeah widow's so yeah, great widow is the sort of insane. like that going sound you shoot in an open space mm -hmm. oh my god it's fantastic you really feel like you're actually building a very high caliber weapon, right? That, that actually has weight and it has a, a sense of <laughs> Hello? feedback and, and uh, sort of makes sound. Also, like it, 
Based on where you are in the map. Well, my man's yeah, trying to fucking that. pin. Yeah, I think this is maybe strong. covered up this kind of as well, but it really feels like the environment strong and we're inside. They're trying you know, to break you up, um, Frown. I'm actually pretty sad about it. Listen, it's it's like nothing about... Okay, can, can I just be clear very quickly? All the anger and all the things I'm talking about has nothing to do with with me playing tank and Elon playing tank. It has nothing to do with that. Like, it literally has nothing. This is and this is literally genuinely bad change for the whole game. That's it. Period. <laughs> right, yeah. Wow, I'm team getting team hide in terror. That's a sorry, that's a big part of it as well. Like it's not just when you when you fire, but you know, getting dude, hit by Dude, let's super talk these, these once. Holy shit, dude. Seems like it Yeah, it has more of an impact. It's not like we're you know we're, yeah. we're giving you an earthquake in your seat, but um, you know, I feel like I'm I'm almost sort of shifting in my seat as as people are getting hit by stuff here as Doomfist lands punches. So <laughs> much more visceral experience, right? Oh yeah, I mean it, cool. it adds so much. I mean, there's so much done to. Um, I mean, I, I'm certainly not an audio guy, but I've talked to them a lot and what they've been working on. But I, I, they've been given the ability to create uh, more accurate sounds in more in in certain spaces. So, like an indoor tighter area or an indoor wider area can have different sounds and mm -hmm. get that sort of sound of things bouncing off the walls. And it's 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 so epic. And not only is it Make the game Jack, feel a lot better. Be as like Uber like a lot. Uber has actually been at, very nice like, to me in the past. It actually makes the environment feel a lot better because you feel more connected. Like you're actually in that space, just the way yeah. all the sounds are playing when you're in that space. The immersion of the environment too. This just the sounds of the environment is. Oh yeah. It's beautiful now. <laughs> if we could just walk through without all the bullets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's only yeah, exactly right. Not so tranquil, I guess, when you're when you're fighting for your life with uh, nine other right. people. Superman. I mean naturally you know th these are changes that you know some of them you thought about before obviously having played so much tank and maybe you wish for some of these and uh you know i'd love to get some of your final super hostage on sort of how <laughs> tank is going to feel and heading into overwatch 2 as i'm sure you'll be uh you'll be strapped in and, and uh playing um i don't know i mean i i feel like i have to get a chance to play it first but uh yeah. based on what based on what i've seen it looks like uh you know tank's gonna have a lot more pressure i feel like or a lot more of a role uh, to play because you know you don't really have that second uh that second tank to help you out and, and you know kind of help clean up your mistakes if you will like you know if you get hooked you get a bubble or matrix or you know whatever it may be uh so i feel like in general it looks like tanks are going to play a lot smarter um but you do get the plus side of having both supports only focus on you as opposed to having two so i think it'll be interesting well uh I, we're interested to hear some of your thoughts as course as the live stream goes and uh, as we get further and further down the uh, development roadmap as well as some of these changes get fleshed out even more super thank you very much for joining us mate obviously i'll be seeing you soon once the the shock get back on the battlefield uh but good to have you here and uh yeah we'll see you soon man thank you for having me appreciate it yeah thank you super thanks and uh that was of course was uh matthew super delissi obviously tank player from the san francisco shock and has given us some really good insights as well maybe on on how it feels uh, for him to see these cha tank changes. I want to now take the opportunity to welcome to our stream, obviously, prolific Thanks. streamer Cupcake. Super obviously, looks as miserable play as we all of FPS feel. titles, including Overwatch. Uh, great to have you with us, Cupcake. A, a lot of news today. Thanks. We're continuing to tease more out of these devs slowly. I'd love to get some of your thoughts on what we have so far. Oh, man. I really like seeing all the new, like, hero looks and, like, the map visuals and the UI updates have been really cool, especially as, like, a support mm -hmm. player. I'm seeing a lot of little, like, UI updates for, like, support heroes, and I'm really excited about them. So, yeah. Absolutely. You and me both, obviously, I'm a support mate as well, so I'm looking forward to teasing yeah. a little bit more uh, out of our out of our devs. Turn down the update. About we mean turn another update. A little bit more about Overwatch I didn't 2, get context, and of course, but I think. yes, we will be showing uh, another map in just a moment. So let's take the opportunity Yay. to uh, to sort of bring uh, these these devs back in, of course. Obviously, uh, Jeff and Dion have given us some uh, great control thoughts yourselves. so far because something that was teased... Uh, just because we're angry about what's going on, uh, do not be angry at that. bit of was actually... Her. The hero I'll start one tapping. Right? Do not do it. Is, you know, it's, it's a game that's set a Behave. little bit further sort of in the future as far as we can tell. And this is reflected Thank you. in Don't worry, what guys, the heroes the actually look like. Really I don't know good. if Dion Jeff, if you can sort of speak to that because uh, it's not just a, like a, a, a jazzy tech upgrade, but something, you know, we can see the passage of time being implied with some of these new looks. Yeah, that, for that's part of it is the passage of time. You can see Ro Reinhardt is a little older. I think there's a sneak peek at a few characters that um, there's a bit of age difference on them as well. 
a bunch of guys are part of Overwatch now, so they have access to cooler tech in their outfits. <laughs> uh, it's just we're having fun, kind of like in a way to show these guys have upgraded their equipment. They're ready to do battle in this new world. Uh, Fara here with their new Overwatch gear. So that she has the armor that fits the Overwatch team. Uh, yeah, and just Reaper is pretty amazing as well. There's definitely a feeling of them looking sort of more high tech in a sense as well. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I love that you kind of, you kind of, uh, this is cheeky. You're kind of teasing a uh, little bits of the story or how the world changes out as we go. So that's just. Yeah, honestly, you know, I don't give a fuck about this kind of shit. To, to sort of and if you do, I'm really sorry. So if you want to go to another stream and come back, it's fine. But can I talk, like yeah, can I talk for like two seconds? Can I talk for like two seconds? Um, Tell us about what the development process on these, uh, on these changes is like i'm gonna be honest i think we'll sort of mention that there's sort of new tech available to developers to sort of bring these characters to life but i'd love to know how you go it feels like it's being kind of this i mean obviously it's a live stream it's a show but it feels like it was kind of yeah, being strung along when cool, super was really, on really cool and i'm not going to speak for him or anything like that you know i felt like that really got strung along and he he had some really good fucking points like he was talking about like hey like you know if you were going to do this you, we do realize there's other changes on the back end that needs to be made you know what i mean like hey like oh is that something you'd want to like you know like would cc be toned down would they be buffed etc those are legitimately real questions so, and it's really up, fucking it concerning just that it kind of sounded like, like they immersive. came up with one of the ideas dynamic, on the fly and started the talking about the it. Characters have the cool tech gear and like, it didn't even sound like there was something they had talked until, about. Kind of it was like, oh yeah, but if we did that, because he literally said, it's hot off so the presses. His exact words, just exact words were, it's hot, right? This is right hot off the presses, but you know, we toned down CFC, we got rid of McCree flashbang, uh, Brig whip shot, etc. right? I'm curious about like, and the new, we, new upgrades to the skins and like- they, It's not like they came up with it in the moment and, and said, oh yeah, like we could totally do that, right? Heroes from Overwatch and like, how and then they they talked about it more as they went on like they were like, like almost brainstorming as it was going well. like, is that that's fucking process? scary like, tedious, were we just gonna go in like, with the same good. fucking shit already um, so and, and the tech, it's kind of like at that point for example the skin shape if you haven't thought that far ahead skins as well have we not thought so far so enough ahead for hard to for that workflow that's easier for the artists but it's still there's there's a level of work there but Everything you see on these new 2.0 heroes, the updated hair shaders, updated skin, uh, detail maps, these will all carry over to the older um, heroes or the older skins. So a lot of stuff looks even better than it did before. Um, yeah, I can only imagine. There's a bit of work there to, to apply some of the new, new um, techniques to those guys, but it's a beautiful upgrade to practically every single skin in the game. So it, it, yeah. it'll be fun for players to see. I don't want to start my rant Is until it after it's, it's over, but to, like, add more customization I just, like, I'm fucking pissed, let me ask. Like, unlocking different, like, color schemes or something like that, or, like, special weapon variations, like even for, like, certain achievements or something Thanks, like Richard, that, by the so way. we have more ways to customize the I way told you, our heroes Give it the fuck together. My, 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 my stream is never about that shit. <laughs> you have to wait and see. You want you're angry about what's going on? Be angry about what's going on. Don't say shit about the people that are on here, okay? <laughs> your last warning. Oh no. What about like mixing and matching like skins and weapons? Is that going to be possible? Like mm, using a weapon one. from yeah, one yeah, skin? One. Oh. Yeah. Cause like that would be so Thanks, much Archie. fun. Like you get right. creative with that. Can you imagine? Like, oh man. Now, I mean, uh, we're, okay. we're already, we're theory crafting. You know, we're off to the races here already. I can't <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I oh, have so many ideas. We have a lot of fun stuff. SK's store. tweet is so good. <laughs> Blizzard will delete a whole like role, but not break. So. Well, speaking of yeah. which, Cupcake, okay, Dion has uh, a new hero to show us. Dion, do you want to talk us through this one? <sighs> yeah. So, so, tweet, holy so shit. The, what can I say Torbjorn. without getting fired? So this is Torbjorn 2.0. You can see he's, nice. a little, he's a little older. He has a bit better technology and gear. And yeah, he's a, the Torbjorn we all know and love. He's just much more in advanced. Uh, he has a cool... He's very new, cool. Uh, you can see the hair shader really well on his uh, beard. But like, imagine that, but with like his summer skin, like weapon. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's the kind of stuff I want to see at some point. Like... <laughs> 
So yeah. that I mean, uh, you can you can definitely see. I mean, some of the some of the changes are big, right? They're vibrant, and obviously, you know, you can definitely see yeah, the passage of time. Right. And some are subtle. You know, it's the it's the patches on the knees of his jeans. It's the mm -hmm. connectors between the hardware that he's using, uh, the goggles that he has. Um, and it, uh, I mean, you can mm -hmm. I thought this was a PVP this stream. Uh, attitude from him, very clearly displayed. Though I think that's very much still been. I thought we were doing eyes. PVP. And you know, we want to upgrade the characters, but we don't want to lose that silhouette that's familiar to players. You know, mm -hmm. he still looks like Torbjorn from a distance. Is it PVP he only? Over? Better and more detailed up close, but it, he maintains that silhouette we come to know and love and like to shoot at. So um, that's uh, some of the extra, extra props to the VFX team for. Doing it so is PVP. Like it's devs uh, versus so community. No shit. Modernization of, of you know, no, uh, yeah, not just obviously how his skins look, but how he behaves in the game and how he interfaces with the world that he's put in. Let's let's shift gear here and talk a little bit more uh, about our next map. Rome was teased at BlizzCon Online, right? We got these beautiful panoramas, these Colosseum looking things, this like sort of mm -hmm. this sort of future Rome, but. Um, that is that's obviously uh coming up next and it needs a push map so i want to talk a little bit more about how a push map is actually developed right the newest game type to the game um give some really unique situations to play through uh, let, let's delve in a, a bit deeper i have to assume right like there's there has to be some symmetry to the map it, i'm sure that's is that sort of right what, we, okay let's, what's important when designing a push map let's start there the pain feels strong so map. symmetry is obviously the number one important part it, it makes it very competitive because both sides have a similar layout but it also makes it tough to create a second one so you had toronto Time that we saw earlier where it was a more of an s-curve layout to the battle in rome you'll see it's kind of a c you kind of cut through the coliseum it becomes tighter when you reach the robot, once you see the players play. This one was where we really found the way, okay, this is how we make iterations on push. It, it, at first, the S-curve was um, an easy one to go to, you know, it's make the map snake through mm -hmm. buildings and things, but how do we switch it up for a different space? And we knew we wanted to make Rome. We knew we wanted to go through the Colosseum, so that's kind of part of the initial design for this version of the push map but it's a very fun mode especially on um in rome i think the thematic of the scene plus pushing the robot kind of enhances how fun this game type is it's, it's such a crazy juxtaposition between all the sci-fi movies that you might watch and then a location that is obviously known yeah. to us and sort of thinking about how mm -hmm. you know the, the passage of time might change it I want to know, um, you know, you, you mentioned, the first thing you mentioned, Dion, I feel like, was that, like, it's very competitive as a result of that symmetry. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and you guys as the developer team on Overwatch have had a good chance to see how so many of these maps play out at the highest competitive level. So I'm curious to know, like, you know, how much is our, over, rather, Overwatch League a factor when you're sort of considering a, a game type or a map design like this, you know? How often do you think, Can oh, I like how the players break this, wise, or, you know, they're going to sort of, so you know, go for the 1% plays on this kind of map? Is, does that factor into the dev process? The much? Sharks tweet, holy shit, dude. Um, I think, so. yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff could probably I mean, answer this bit. Yeah, I mean, they, um, I mean, certainly, I feel like it's hard to uh, imagine a, a player base sort of breaking a map apart probably as much as the Overwatch teams, <laughs> Overwatch League teams do. Um, and they will find that stuff fast and it, it use even the smallest things. Um, so yeah, I mean, we definitely, as far as like the, the, the specific layout, we're looking at all that stuff uh, quite a bit, but especially when we're developing a new mode, um, it's very much taken into account how competitive it's going to be. And, and as was brought up earlier, um, you know, based on the rule set, we want to make sure if we can avoid it, we want to avoid any kind of tie situation. Sure. Um, this, this mode certainly prevents that. Um, and then, as Aaron was talking about earlier, like we were debating whether or not this should be like kind of easy to push. Everything's by the way, it's two for eleven months. Get a point, and and the get, prime for you know, four. Maybe it's multiple rounds and push is one point, but then it's like you get in that potential tie situation, and this, the, you lose some of that sort of sort of epic tension of um, pushing it those last little bits and people fighting over those little bits of space and um, so I think, uh, yeah, I mean, we're very cognizant of that, especially with new modes, thinking about how they're going to be played and competitive. We had so many uh, matches that came down to two, three meters. This is oh, yeah. such a fun, just you feel good even Catch losing, you, you know, you're like, your that was a great battle because it felt like we fought really hard for those last two, three uh -huh. meters.
This map is genetically engineered for play-by-play -play casters. I like that. More opportunities for us to just <laughs> yell nonsense. Uh, we're going to jump in and, and check this one out. Got, we've got a bunch more questions. I'm sure, Kaka, you do as well here. But, I mean, first impression is, is wow. This is an incredible vista. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. Wow. Absolutely stunning stuff. We, we talked about, you know, Dion, you mentioned like the S-shape sort of uh, thing, but it looks like this, there's some twists and turns here. It's almost like the... In addition uh, to removing 2CP, the they removed well every game points. mode except it for does, Deathmatch. It's a little bit of C-shape, and then there's this bridge overpass that's pretty fun to encounter. I, I think uh, I'm curious to see how this battle plays out once the players get to the... So overpass. are we not going to see any of the owl plot? Like, okay, so we brought in the Overwatch the League and we're not going to see any Overwatch League players? Like, any good fucking players play the game? We're not going to see one set of good players? Really? Like, nothing against these guys. I've said it a million times. It's not against their skill. I just want to see what good players playing this game would actually end up looking like. Because I think you see... Widow v. Widow! Boom! The subtlety Kills the other Widow. Boom, 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 boom! And kills the other three. So amazing, and you can, can see we see good players? Sort of off and certain of them are open, um, as far as in between the pillars. And that was can we see good players? Part of it. I remember, like, um, I'm sorry, no offense to these guys. I really don't mean to be mean to them. I rem I'm really not. It's just, fly over them, so it's, it's just the truth of what we should be doing right now. If you're like a Pharaoh or Genji and you want to get cheeky, um, but we didn't want to close it off entirely, so that one section was sort of everyone's favorite right away in playtesting, um, and then just the man a massive man iteration on it was great, right? So we'll see it here. That quality of life trains on Winston's bubble it does not go unnoticed, by the way. The duration of the bubble remaining, uh, being shown on the HUD is, is huge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is it huge, though? I have that in my head, like, perfectly. Sorry, I mean, I just love the curvature, actually. Like, the only time it's a problem is this diva bomb going off, and I'm like, oh, God, it's 8 or 9, 8 or 9, 8 or 9, 8 or 9. I don't know which one it is. track and see the other if you're a sniper. So even that small tweak, you know. Like, really, it's Uber. I like Uber, but. I'm sure. You've thought right. about it to quite a great degree. I think um, Shock, you know what it looks like? It looks like original Overwatch's UI and, and they changed it. Definitely gonna be wanting to talk about here is that not the UI, not sorry, the, the the hero pictures. But like the UI, I don't know, like changed, it just right? it like I feel like they went for a very sport. clean look. It looks a little but, bit different when it comes to the HUD and some of those abilities. I don't know, like it, honestly, yeah. go ahead, change change even the UI. Even the don't care. Placement of the orbs, Whatever you want to do. But uh, it's so much better. Like more in the middle rather than having it on this side. Oh, yeah. um, I think that's really nice. I've noticed like the little changes with like having Mercy, like it shows when Mercy's healing somebody a lot more clearly. Mm -hmm. And I like having the, the icons of having pros who show the max it's on, you know. Um, I like players. the, I, I wish I to see more with um, Ana. You know what it also like, would do? Would it Anna would show us that me, if it was true like, to what was being right. said of like, hey, like, like you know, like this oh, actually yeah. has a lot of good yeah. promise, etc. Like, so and cool. seeing them actually play it. You know, I feel like I have to tell. If they played it and it looked good, holy shit, that would be great. They'd be like, oh, like that gives like some faith of like, okay. Yeah. Maybe there's something like, something to be said here, yeah. but it feels it very much it feels like, right now so like this is being like, okay, scripted, not like to level like obviously it's scripted like you know what I mean like oh hey like we're gonna do this section etc. But it feels very much like oh yes everything is perfect nothing is actually wrong at all there is no questions don't be afraid everything is great like it's like you are talking radical major changes and not really like being you know healing or damage boosting you right obviously your screen sort of. In, in, on live, Ninety seven percent of this player base like is sort of this bad or worse. Glow, but yeah, but what does that have to do with it? it? You don't balance competitive games from the bottom up. You balance from the top is down. Is that also the case with like um, a nano boost, for example? I can't remember if we've actually changed the the one P nano. This is this an AMA? Uh, it's a demo. Yeah. Yeah, but would you not want to yeah, show the, why it's general, good in the demo? You know, great big passes going across. Uh, I mean. It's really across the team. I mean, you can see the the skin passes, and I, those emails get sent out all the time. Like, oh, look at these cool you know, skin changes and you know tech we're getting, and then there's also VFX updates. Look at the Thanks. VFX changes we're making on sound, of course. So it's kind of just awesome being player. like, even if I'm not directly you know working on that stuff, just sort of seeing that stuff cross my email and the examples being sent out. It's just awesome, like day to day, seeing all the changes. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure your your inbox is sort of Regardless swarm. Regardless of what they do, um, if they take I, one person, I sort of wonder what, what the oh, tank look, it was mentioned that uh, this one of as well that mode. sort of the assault game mode sort of there wouldn't be sort of further maps developed for right the focus would not and i'm open to it so i'm open to, i'm open-minded you know but i want to see good players try it because like like fab said mo you say most of the player base is like this bad or right, worse so that, 
<laughs> Which, by the way, <laughs> I think this is like gold player, so I don't <laughs> think that's totally <laughs> true. But uh, probably most you have to also understand, though, neither I mean, tank we, player on either team uh, has almost made a single... The, uh, yeah, in all these games, the best guy we saw was the hog last game. He got like three hooks, that was the best we'd ever seen. But Nobody has made any know, plays. Uh, the DPS are getting kills. The supports are doing their jobs. Like tanks have literally not made a single of ounce really of impact in any of these games. The not one little bit. Um, we, we, <laughs> so tell me how it's more fun. Had, had tell me how it's better. And, because they're not going to do anything. They're going to AFK. And it was like... The hardest problem ever. Go ahead and solve it, you guy. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's kind of rough, actually, in retrospect. Uh, but uh, so, you know, we, we've got a lot of, went through a lot of changes, and um, it got to the point where we were like, like imagine queuing up a game and so picking Diva. Your fucking team, team would go bananas. At that point, think about that one for two that, seconds. Why don't we just make? You want to talk about the yeah, like the other huge white, percentage uh, of the like player base? Yeah, that other percentage percent of the player, player base doesn't see a Reinhardt in front of them. They're gonna scream. Guess what? You only get Reinhardt now. So you only get a hog. You only get whatever the meta tank is. There literally is no other tank to run. <laughs> I would say that there is literally the only whatever the meta tank is now. But they're, they're you want to talk meta? Uh, when people find out what the meta tank York, is, you got five people you. yelling at one guy oh, sorry, to New tell York, him to play West, fucking West, uh, a certain hero. York. At least well, right now, at least right now, I mean, if like you're like, let's play meta, and, and your other tank picks hog, right. the other guy goes, yeah, well, not much I can do about it. He's playing hog. I gotta play something else. And you have two people, and the game has to be like, either both have to switch, or that it kind of like turns into like this little like push push pull. But now your games are even gonna be more hijacked. Imagine how helpful you feel now? Amplify that by 10 when they have a full meta comp with a Ryan or with a, 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 a Zarya or whatever. And guess what you have? You got a Diva and he ain't swapping. I was just gonna comment because we were there, although they just. Lord Daddy, they went. This is a by the way, for months. Appreciate it. Yeah. Get ready for that one. It's like this like corkscrew, basically. And it's super interesting. Yeah, it like goes up, it basically flipped on itself and goes over itself, and uh, you can see it coming up here. Um, so you go under, in this case you go to the right, and then back up. And then no, Elo Hell won't be tenfold. Um, no, no, no. Like you're, you're not going to be more stuck in your rank because of this. In fact, when first what you will it, be, though, is more frustrated. We had our first feedback session where it was like, I don't know if I like this or not. It's either right. amazing or it's terrible. I can't even tell. <laughs> like it's it's super interesting and very impactful. Uh, and so if you can't like, tell in your brand new game whether something's fun or not, so, that probably uh, means it's not fun. A big impact is almost more important if you can get the, the, the good stuff of it. Um, so uh, after a lot of iteration, it's it's. If you just made something that's brand new and supposed to attract people to it, to play and you can't figure out if it's fun, that's probably a bad sign, is it not? on top to drop down below because you have to go under this pass and if you just sit in the middle of that pass as reaper or something like that and just drop down of course you yeah. gotta worry about gonna be jumping up on you or something um, there's actually a little wall on the right you can climb up right there um if you're uh, a character that can climb or a grapple or something so it's just like this when you're going through that after playtesting this map enough and playing enough when you're going under that pass it's the most like Dramatic. anxiety inducing <laughs> spot <laughs> yeah, it's just like, especially when it's like calm for a while at first because like you know after a fight and you're going there's no sounds you're like okay what is about to happen here where are they gonna be coming from and it's like there's a sneaky little frustrated. alleyway in there too a, a tiny one shoot yeah, under the bridge right. there's an alleyway there reaper 76 you, there's a lot of uh so it's like Gibraltar, right you, you go through that first or underpass and it, you just know it's a little too quiet you know I mean, I'm, I'm loving it. It looks like, I mean, the, the verticality difference between sort of playing in this initial sort of bend and then outside on the corkscrews is, is huge. Like the, you'd have to sort of switch columns almost to try and make the most of it. Cupcake, you, we've seen now uh, a good decent bit of Rome. I, I'd love to get some more of your thoughts here. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I think it's absolutely beautiful. Thanks. I love all Honestly, the like arch flex, architecture and everything like in it. I was fascinated when I was watching the, the preview during the Blizz Online on it. And um, I would, you know, lately, love to get in to there get and like just go explore it and look around and like figure out like, what the best way to go about this is. Because there's a lot to it. It's, it's a little confusing like looking at it from like this perspective, but I'm sure once you get in there and you actually like play it, it makes a lot more sense, you know? 
even with even at 5v5 yeah you, you definitely have the feeling of like franticness or hecticness you know sort of around the bot yeah exactly and this, this yeah. seems like a game mode that's catered to like giving these like adrenaline sort of Thanks. pumping moments the in worst overtime, part right? about this um, is the fact that even if oh, yeah. the overwatch it seems like there's a lot of yeah overtime moments. Their minds about this what it's i love though is that these buildings don't to seem to separate like, exactly. even no it, it, the top right that's side, it's like, if it isn't if this if it isn't changed before it goes live it will never change that is promised like i'm telling you exactly yes. process as well because you have to think of everything you cannot leave a stone unturned when you sort of turn this tapestry exactly. into you know something vibrant like this incredible stuff there it is so cool. right that was your first look of obviously at some gameplay on rome a beautiful map and my god yeah i really think that uh the shot callers out there are going to have to be thinking so a mile a minute just how they can take advantage so of the sort of topography of the map no uh, as it sort of changes <laughs> Uh, but either really way, it doesn't stuff. matter. I mean, if you giga buff tanks, the tanks become even more oppressive, and games are decided by that tank diff. But, I, I like but if you don't they buff them, they are useless. They just sit there AFK. But the map sort of changes the. It doesn't fix the problem. It does. It doesn't yeah, fix it, it at all. Feels a lot different. Like if the um, problem that they had was with tanks being like, too level, strong in so the I'm game, curious how it's gonna work on their problem like, there doesn't get my, fixed like, by I'm removing like one Overwatch because you either make it then oh, useless. Like I'm plat, you know. A lot, a lot of my Overwatch experience as a support, like I solo queue support. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's the struggle is real. And so my experience is like, you know, I have my team, my tanks are just like Leroy Jenkins in and I'm like, OK, here we go. And I'm just trying to like keep up, you know, so I'm curious, you know, how that's going to go on like as like plat games, you know, <laughs> yeah, but now I'm going to find out because I sure as they pick ball, they, they roll into their team, and they die. Or you should even better, <laughs> better. They pick hog, walk really into their team and die. So y'all know. I feel okay. you know like, <laughs> like I she does provide like a casual out uh, in look which is great which is why it's, it's like it's really good they have her on you know i mean we uh, you have to understand that casuals are a big part of the game you know and you shouldn't you shouldn't be saying anything about her because of her rank she's openly talking about being planned we i mean speaking of incredible locations we actually still have okay. one more map to show everybody but like so ladies and gentlemen stick around it's not it's gonna it's gonna, it's gonna have the same problems in plant like it has nothing to do with you haven't heard anything about you know each rank will have the same problem for more of this overwatch 2 pvp developer live stream my chat i try to always set a good example for you guys okay and i do try to do the best i can i am fucking angry right now i am mad you haven't fucking told you haven't figured it out yet I don't typically get mad like this, you know, because I know this is not good. Not only for the game, for my own, you know, enjoyment, my own job security, whatever you want to call it. You know what I mean? But I will not attack any of these people personally. And if you do, you're a piece of shit. So shut the fuck up. You can talk about the game being bad. You can talk about the fucking decisions being mad. And then you end it at that. that one tomorrow thanks for the huge 10 gifted dude i appreciate it Jeff, you gotta get this make sure you show them some love say thank you appreciate the huge 10 dude thank you so much oh yeah if you guys haven't heard that alert it's for five plus gifted that's our that it's just so it doesn't get worn out if some of you have never heard that before surprise i don't understand how it makes sense to keep the other roles and toot the role but tanks of one one to one that's literally unbalancing the game. That's why 2-2-2 is so necessary. Alright, Dan, you're, you're hitting a nail right on the head there. You're hitting it right on the head. I didn't even die! I didn't even die! I didn't even die! I didn't even die! I didn't even know what's going on! Kara, thanks to the huge five, dude. We, we, we all need that right now. Thank you so much. And Tater with the huge five is... Tater with the huge five too. Sam, 
Sam, Welcome we got we got to talk about all this, dude. We got to talk about all this. Final map of the day. I, I read your uh, tweet, so I know you're on the other side. Crunchy thanks to the huge five as well. And Gold Bond, dude. You guys are too. You guys are too kind. Holy shit, you guys are going crazy. PVP uh, from I'm just gonna let it play really quick. Watch one's PVP throughout the journey, but I think like this is a, a pretty drastic kind of change from what the players are used to at home. Uh, I guess for the players at home now, like, uh, like what can the expectations be? You know, obviously, like you guys have mentioned, a lot of this is still work in progress. Yeah, that's a great. It's a, a great point to bring up. And I think it's, um, I've never heard a more term for a than for really right what's going on right now. Like real talk. I think there's probably a lot of people you know, watching the stream. Um, is there any better than a time? Is there, there ever a better this, time for that you know, alert than right and, now? Uh, for real talk, chat. Is there ever been a better time? A lot of off tank players in the game. Crunchy Star thinks the five. Gold Bond thinks the five. Shadow Magic thinks the huge five. Susan Juice with the huge five. Chevy Straight Pipe with the five. And H Bar, thanks so much for all the five. The gifts of subs, guys. You guys are crazy. I've never heard a better time for that alert in my whole life. Actually, in my whole life. Overwatch for a long time where it was you, you actually actually months, dude, just chaos pure pandemonium pars thanks to the prime as well i appreciate it dude i hate being upset like this chat i hate being um, mad and having and this negative bullshit like people, like bad mean takes this, on like the game you know what i mean to to look at a change like this you know or, or maybe it's, it's a little bit shocking because, i hate having it but like um, it's the truth any any time a big change like this happens and you start settling settling into like a pattern of an uncertainty or of fear you you really translate it within your current context um but the the game will continue to evolve and continue to shift the the shift from um the shift into rollock it, it changed some of the some of the meta of the game yeah. um and now people look at the the tank role role. Of, i've been watching of, the whole thing all of the roles a little different than they did than they did previously and i think that that is a natural result of something like this and so it might be easy to say like well i'm an off tank player how is this going to affect me as an off tank player and i get that there are there's strategy there and there's synergies between some of these tanks but if you're an off tank player if if you're a, a diva player or a zarya player you can still Bogart, there's be never been a better time than for this player. alert right now. And what we're hoping is, is when you get in the oh, game. Oh, we have sniper monkey. You know what happens? We shoot the widow with 50 our taser, and, you get and then she and just goes. Feel what it's like to play as, as two Daria tap. or Diva. You'll come away um, really enjoying the experience. Yeah, I think one thing you mentioned, which is a really good shout, is that yeah, like you're you kind of view this in the context of like how you have it now right where you're like well wait like if crazy by the way thanks so much for the huge five again five today like how would i and, and how would tessa I do, like, prime. Zarya, or you know how it may work but uh i think to some of the stuff that Bulger, sam wants to talk to, about it after you jeff like i think there's you know, just so many changes should. that go on with the heroes we gotta, we gotta, that we gotta, we gotta are involved this. with this that super tweeted yeah like i i think to your point aaron like you really once you get a feel of it that's when you really kind of it sets in yeah, it's and it, it is a big overhaul. We get that it's a that it's a big overhaul, but at the same time, fire. it still feels like Overwatch when you're playing mm -hmm. Overwatch. Like the heroes all still feel amazing and incredible. You have these great plays. There is still a ton Thanks. of strategy for your take, team and everybody on it for them to, um, the DPS to, to use. And so I, I understand that it's a big change, but this is still like this is still the same game that that we've been playing all along. Yeah, it keeps all those core aspects that everybody loves about Overwatch, yeah. but you know, just, yeah, just kind of like changes a little bit of the core and push it forward. Uh, the final map we have today, uh, Dion, and uh, that when, when, when we were going over like, what are we going to show today and like some of the maps, I was like, this map needs to be last because uh, <laughs> it's just <laughs> like absolutely stunning. Uh, Monte Carlo, talk to me a little bit about it. Okay, so Monte Carlo and another map where it's this beautiful, opulent, the wealthy in the Overwatch universe go oh, here to yeah. play, you know? Uh, flying yachts, casinos, luxury hotels, AI F1 races. It's, it's we're another map. No, we're having a lot super of fun tweet is applying this Overwatch aesthetic it, to the world. It's kind of like, yeah, it looks like he just can't say anything, but he's Carlo saying something Monica. without saying something, without saying something, you know what I mean? So, 
Uh, and this also has a nice story connection to the overall um, story of Overwatch 2, so look out for that as uh, we share more later. But yeah, it's the, it's it's just gorgeous. I mean, and the one thing that strikes oh, me about it doesn't this matter. Map, There's nothing they're gonna say at this I point. You guys can obviously speak to it the best. Is that each point and area of the map plays so drastically different? Uh, you know, once we'll actually see it in play, but. Uh, is that something that you guys are looking at with map design of just like how you guys can change like verticality, levels of terrain? I want really, bathroom, dude. That's not what I fucking empower care about. Right there. certain heroes or certain roles to really kind of take advantage of that. We're definitely doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of the Overwatch 2 maps have features in them that, that we haven't built before. Um, everyone just got a, a look at Rome. And we have that sort of um, sort of like switchback section in it, or or like the the loop section, and and that was something we tried three or four times over the entire course of Overwatch de <laughs> development, and we're just never able to get it to work right. And and on Rome, we we feel like we finally cracked the code on something like that. Um, in in Monte Carlo, there is this really cool uphill section in the map. Um, and it's it's steeper and, and longer than anything we've done before, um, and so there's a lot of um, like difference in elevation there, um, and, and I feel like it it kind of just speaks to um, some of the some of the changes that we're willing to make um, with this game in order to, to introduce new gameplay and to have it feel fresh and, and vibrant for players. Yeah, I definitely think we can start off that final map. We can keep this discussion going because that was one of the first things that I noticed about this map. I was like, oh, like we're going, we're going straight. I was like, oh, this feels like, you know, very like, you know, classic Overwatch. Like here, here's the choke. And then all of a sudden we're going up. And I was like, I, I, I can't remember a map, you know, maybe even I think people when they see it probably would compare to like, I know I can vault when you're kind of going around the castle, yeah. but it's even steeper than that. Like, uh, you know, I, I remember, you know, you're looking at it and you're like, oh man, how are they getting up there? Like, uh, it, it, it's such a cool dynamic though. Yeah, definitely. And um, Eichenwald's a great example of it, but uh, of, of rising through a map, but this one doesn't have a large structure in the middle of it. So you're, you're going up this really big elevation and it's all open. Um, and so there's a lot more interplay between the two teams as they're trying to push up the, up the hill. And I, I love the, the the spawn rooms uh, with the cars and everything. <laughs> it's just so cool. As uh, yeah, you just kind of see both of these teams, uh, you know, come out of the spawn. Just you load into Havana versus Glister and Striker on one, Overwatch uh, Two, and your master's you tank like locks Zarya. Track, uh, even the checkpoints Feel. Is being, you know, kind of like your uh, uh, your kind of checkpoint how they would be in like a race. Mm -hmm. uh, as yeah, you see this. So this first point is uh, really interesting. I, I think for a lot of people is you know, where, where we'll see Zarya on defense. It's like a, a solo tank. Like you can you can play so many different ways, right? Uh, I've I've seen people play like really close up by like some of these staircases a little bit further back. You can play the snipers up on the bridge. You can play like soldier up on the bridge. I think uh, just add so much more dynamics to play. Yeah, and you definitely. can see the. Um payload is uh, another we're having fun with the payload here is a ai driven f1 car or race so in uh you know creating the the escort maps how does that different from you know some of the other things you guys are working on you know like push uh you know like uh you know hybrids controls like uh is there a different type of philosophy when going into star like a map uh you know for escort versus some of those other modes yeah, there's a lot of a lot of differences mm -hmm. between these types of modes, and when you when you do map design on Overwatch, like one of the things you always have to think about is is where the spawn rooms are going to be and how you're going to get out of the spawn rooms. And obviously, it's it's different. Coming out of a spawn room is different on a payload map than any of our other map types because you immediately start interacting with the objective. Um, the, one of the toughest things about developing payload maps for Overwatch is the entire route needs to be like a certain minimum width just to be able to get the payload to fit through it. And usually you want to have enough space on the sides of it so that you can move around. Um, there, we do have a few tight sections in our maps, but they're very short. Like right after you get the payload in King's Row, it gets very tight, but that's, that's for a short period of time. And so when you do start making these wider areas, 
it becomes very difficult to control sight lines and it gets it gets easy to make very long sight lines through the map where it no longer really feels like an overwatch map anymore because we really try to control those things i mean it's i think it's why you see that a lot of the payload maps they they do weave back and forth a lot and so much of that is about controlling sight lines and then also presenting like difficult areas for for a team to push through oh this is the hilly yeah, so, section yeah, yeah so i was gonna say that's the that's the area of verticality where like uh there's a, a sniper perch up here to kind of like that uh you know right hand side if we're looking at it but yeah just uh, this poses so many different obstacles for teams but i also think it's it's kind of presents multiple ways to play where uh, you see right now both teams playing the zarya but like you could play really fast and kind of dive up onto the high ground like you can play really slow kind of work your way around so uh, it, it, this team is just actually kind of just rolling on through this, <laughs> this, this, uh, Zar zarya seems to be the tank choice of the day mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and you I can guess see, so that change is pretty new <laughs> you can see from a visual standpoint that, uh, when making a payload map they're pretty large maps for an overwatch space so we want the visuals to kind of change as players complete objectives the world looks different to them you know they, there was it was flat before and then you've reached the first objective and now you're on the hill and they'll move into the hotel for the final objective. Am I okay? so there's this visual no. progression to um, kind of your completing real objectives and you feel like you're making I'm not progress okay. through the map because the world around you is somewhat I'm really not somebody who like stamps my like, feet and uh, gets like really mad almost, and talks like, about like kind of dog shit devs like don't know what they're doing because they work real fucking hard start through that choke area goes towards that high ground and then but you have this that, like, interior is and bad the interior for this map this is, is one of the cooler and, and, things and i have talked I've very highly the past couple Overwatch weeks about not only Overwatch 2 and everything we'll get to see it but just the, the i said that it. your overwatch um, talking about being 5v5 is literally just like a we, we like a, just a take to get us through to overwatch bit, 2 like that uh, they would never really do that like they're not that stupid we're watching kind of silver like players casino. play widow so and fucking dominate because yeah, they literally can't do anything about it and really fun this is like a silver or gold game over time average overwatch map design and the widows are unbeatable the, the, the widows are dominating the what these bit. games um, these fights do the, the presence you, or the, the importance it's of that's high it. ground really can't be understated in this game um and so we're trying to give more of that to teams mm -hmm. um and trying to <laughs> create that? kind of no like no 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 it's, it's nothing against curly mustache i just tweeted it I would love to have seen yeah, some no, of these I games at high level to play. A, like, shooter, why didn't, right? why <laughs> didn't, like, and, and you know what? I know, I know what the reason is. The, the I know the answer. But uh, why didn't they grab Overwatch is either a bunch of GM players, players or, or Overwatch League players or a bunch of streamers? Like, like, the wall climb, like why wouldn't, like, you know, what if they threw yeah, with like a me, Emon, Jay, like this, Sam, Bulger? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just looking at, like, chat. Like, I'm to be honest with you, I can't even think right now. I genuinely can't even think. Overwatch. They grabbed, like, a bunch of players kind of have us line and, uh, come you know, in and, and the, test the it and show people like hey this, this is what know, it would look like at high uh, level play I, and, and people could be like holy shit that's what it looks like <laughs> but look at this <laughs> it's so <laughs> slow <laughs> it's so boring <laughs> like it's literally you know, dominated it's by what sniper the hits the first shot moving, but that's just from my <laughs> point of view uh <laughs> this is the what hotel portion of this is the hotel portion of the casino the luxury Casino. Yeah, and you can see the high ground in the back over there. It's actually really difficult for us to put a lot of it into our game. Um, one of the okay, things we do in Overwatch, Overwatch is oh, there's definitely um, a new tank our carriers. stairs are very shallow. Um, and we don't typically I mean, have, Boger, have you seen what happened with some of the tanks? Game. Like, don't get me wrong, they're not the best um, players. The like, it's okay, like, it's nothing like against that. them personally, but um, they but haven't done anything. So in four maps, not a single tank player has made a play other than the hog on second map got three hooks in a row and actually popped off. Other than that, neither tank has done anything for four games. Interesting point. Not one play. Not one. Taken a kind of a notice of yeah, yeah but don't let the monkey like, tesla yeah, the shot thing very, distract like, like, you from small, what's actually like, happening climbs, like there's kind of turns to get to that elevation no nope, nothing's happening uh, look at this that just to keep like everything they literally can't do anything yeah. there's nothing to do about it yep so that's part of it to so keep it smooth, this is fucking keep soldier 76 in um, 2021 it's, fucking dominating it's also like with a fucking be, ash um, really like 
You know what the Zarya is doing? Um, the Zarya is just pull. AFK on the wall to ground. To overcome a really steep staircase, it's almost like a wall in front of you, and you don't know what's going to be at the top of it. And so we always like for players to be able of course, to run through of course, our maps, of course, Boger, of course. Space and kind of develop a You're one of the one of the best one of the best Winston's out there, especially on the ladder. You know, like I, I like to put Overwatch League players in their own category, but like you, you and I, we, we know what you know what I mean. Like I just don't like to go near that topic. But like you're one of the best Winston players out there, and you would probably fucking struggle in this. Because you know what happened? You jump up, you turn around so you don't get headshot by Widow. She still shoots you through your fucking legs. The Hanzo's already eat you. And Ana took a shot on the way by. And you went back to spawn so fast you got to look and talk and chat again. It, you know what? This is the greatest thing for tank streamers. I can sit here and talk to chat all day long now because there's no fucking... There's nothing to do. All I gotta do is find a crazy Widow player to duo with and I'll just talk to chat the whole game. You can't see where he's shooting you from and you're just yeah. gonna get <laughs> pelted on the way up. Uh it's not the, the best of feelings, you know? To my knowledge, I didn't know, I had yeah. no idea about 5v5. Uh, yeah, watch the beginning of this really stream. Watch the beginning before this side. happened. Um, I said, that will never <laughs> happen. 5v5 <laughs> will not happen. That was just a play Overwatch video. Okay, keep the, keep the Nobody said moving. anything about it. No one said anything. I, I love, Wasn't going to happen. Like, you see where that Look what happened. Sitting up top. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, uh, one of the cool things about uh, this map that I definitely saw when watching it was that, like, the attackers can actually like access that area. Like you can go around uh, where we see. Connected up there. Uh, yeah. yeah, curly mustache uh, <laughs> rotating. Frosting uh, uh, to the two one, dude. Connected. Appreciate it. How much uh, I did. That's something we haven't really seen in a lot of the world. Yeah, we try to. Sorry, I'm just looking at my Twitter the constantly. We flanking routes, and we we try to make it so that at least one team, like the team, can be aware of um, people that are coming on a flank. Um, I can't even like look at the responses. Don't try to let you get all the way around behind the defense without having some way of knowing that it's coming or having the offense burning something like that. Mm -hmm. And we think this one's fair. We've gone back and forth on this a lot. There, there, there's been 30 different variations of this route, but ho hopefully this one's fair. <laughs> Depending on how your game goes, it's fair or not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Depending on who else is in the test. Uh, I actually have some questions from uh, Twitter that uh, I know some people have been uh, pulling and just kind of uh, just really, I think, things that people are interested in. Uh, for you guys, what change to uh, you know, character, buff, or nerf are you guys most looking forward to that you guys have uh, played around, implemented with thus far? Wow. I mean, that's a... That's, um... It's a, a great lot. question, you know, to ask yesterday. But I think now that we've <laughs> gone over, um, gone over a lot of what we've been working on, there's so many changes to characters all across the board. Um, and Jeff in, left and took a tank with to, him to the tank role, the hero passives that we're introducing with with all the other roles in, in the game. So, um, as well as like the the some of the the work that we've been doing. Um, uh, with uh, like CC abilities in the game, so it's, it's really hard yeah, I, to pick one of those. Uh, God, dude, my personal one fucking Twitter's the one more enjoyable than this shit right now. Mine was the Reinhardt stuff. Uh, yeah, as somebody too. who's always wanted to play Reinhardt, who's pretty tragic at it, uh, <laughs> being able to be wait, Ryan more, has 550 so HP in this game mode. Able to be a little bit more brawly and more offensive. Are you, dude? Did they put uh, that on the, the live to see if it was play. usable? And they're like, oh, that shit's imp uh, that shit's powerful, dude. We should put that when it's solo tank. Give him 550 when he's alone, and he'll still work. Everyone's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But take away it on the live server. At least put it in my mind that it could be a possibility. Yeah. That's always the promise of Reinhardt um, in any version of Overwatch that you're playing is that moment where you get to drop the shield and go in and just start laying waste to people. Feels but you so don't play good. Reinhardt like that. Yeah, Reinhardt is not the hero. You sit there and you shield. You wait, wait. Okay, you can go. Like, that's not how it's all ever worked. Hi, little Reinhardt. Shield stop, shield stop, shield stop, shield stop, shield stop, swing, swing. Shield stop, shield stop, swing, stop, stop. Shield stop, fire strike, shield stop. Corner, 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 recharge. Shield stop stop she'll uh, stop like it's not here's another one uh from uh, twitter uh, now go that, swing uh, like that's never how it's fucking been played the, the fact that i just heard those words come out of their mouth is disgusting separate, like completely separate like different environments like but how do you guys it's uh, literally my silver rank cosplay really i've talked about this for months uh we talked a lot about that earlier when we started developing dude i, I just want to throw my headset dude i want to throw it 
you know, you look at a hero like Winston, Winston is... For my heads, I didn't do anything wrong. A lot of his enjoyment comes from sort of how... Oh, Jesus know, Christ, they can't even kill the Baby Diva because of the pocket! What the fuck?! Too far ahead of your team or your healers and you know, how you're committing... And everything. Nothing but against these players, but just like this whole thing is just stupid. Okay, like, I'm sorry, so like, it's, it's just the truth. There's nothing against these guys, like... You know what I mean? I'm not trying to play them on their skill, I'm playing them on the game. Okay, well, we really need to talk about if we're gonna keep these separate or, or are we just making changes to the base hero. Um, so a lot of the, like for instance, the, the current Winston alternate fire he has where he can shoot that Yo, flash. Yo, Stumpy, these are huge. I didn't even know what's going on. Like, oh, I wonder if this is gonna apply to the base kit. Plus we're doing all the other chains of PvP and uh, so we started playing with it in PvP. So in those cases- like, I don't know either, dude. Like Shit, thanks to the Prime, dude. Stumpy, yeah, thanks to the huge five gifted, dude. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Just so we can make sure that they shine really great on the- Dude, there's never been a better time for that notification, that alert than now, honestly. I did have to mention one thing really quick, because kind of fun <laughs> i did um early on i just had to make this this uh prototype but i, I did a prototype of like a pvp ve mode i called it which was like a, a hybrid mode because i think like i, I, I get the expectation that people will probably ask about that what's going on if we want to do that goes move thanks to the huge five as well and uh it was a little i appreciate it, it thank like, you so much it wasn't a lot of balancing oh, done it was just like oh, God. Let's throw all the crazy pv stuff in here and see yeah, do, you, do you guys know what's going on because i don't tragic, know but uh it was pretty interesting and like there's maybe a version of that yeah, exactly. There's maybe a version that we could do with that at some point in the future, but we don't have like direct plans for that right now because it was one thing came out of it like this is fun, but like man, this would be a lot of work trying to balance this anywhere mm -hmm. close to what it would have to be. Thank you. Do it. Yeah, we we do a lot of experimentation like that, um, which I, I think is one of the funnest parts about working on this game. And I know like oh, as as they were playing Rome, you know, there was a question of like, hey, are we working on? Like, do you work on other game modes? And it is something that we do a lot. Actually, the, the push map, or the push game mode, came out of a whole different game mode that that we were working on. Um, as we were kind of trying to solve how you would no, put um, a capture the flag into like a Wait, main come, version. Wait, don't have a chance when I'm trying to read Bunker's message! Weapon. We weren't really able to do it, yeah, but push kind of came out of that. Oh, oh um, I know nobody are, knows. Trust me, Bunker. Like, I can't say anything, but I know nobody I had a clue. Really, really I know nobody had a clue. About, um, and hopefully it's something that we'll be able to talk to. And that's talk that's to it's fucking sad, dude. About later. <laughs> I, I, I love that. Yes. More ways to play is, <laughs> yes. is is totally fine with me, and I'm sure the rest of the community. Uh, what well, it's uh, it's something that I've actually kind of like found throughout the day, and you know, it's, it's one of the things that's like a little bit newer to the live game. It's like the experimental part, and then some of the things you're able to do there and try out cool things that look like they've kind of made their way in. Uh, I feel like that's actually been a huge thing for you guys uh, for really just kind of testing out you know, the April Fool stuff. Uh, I don't know how that works in a solo <laughs> tank, but like, give me flying Sigma so I can just battle Faros and ignore my team. But uh, a lot of a lot of some of that stuff is really interesting that you guys are able to try. Oh, I go big there, I see it. I feel like what's going on it's sort of like the rumbling bread and Ellis so thanks for all the gifted guys. I appreciate you guys. This is kind of cool. Thank you, thank you show this if you can get their impressions but yeah like, you can't really do that in fact we've talked about in the past about expanding maybe even showing more stuff but um you know like what if we showed like crazy early level layouts that was just all like gray box stuff like how early can we show before it gets like really like, here's a, you know what's going on a stick man gun like is that just like <laughs> not even worth giving feedback on or what but like um so it, it's 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 been powerful and we're still looking at ways to sort of use it and you know it's just another thanks again mcnasty for another five oh, appreciate it so dude thanks so much the other day and it's like the april fool's patch was ridiculous but then when like you saw like some of the communities like oh, this is kind of cool and you're just like wait no, hold on. Yeah. like like, like it, we we get the sigma's cool to fly for a day or two but like we, we can't have that all the time right <laughs> exactly oh. The final uh, area, and then uh, uh, there was one question actually just about uh, you know, Blue Lemon Six with a huge five as well, like, uh, dude. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna get to the sub by any of the subs. Make sure you say thank you, chat. That's all I ask of you. Over the last few years, uh, feel like it's, it's really I know the sub noise is. is there's never been a better um, time than right it, now. It's a, the work from home is a bit of a mixed bag, you know. Um, and when we first when we first started. We were really worried about how productive the team would be because mm -hmm. it's never something we've, it's something we haven't really done before. Um, 
and we the team is amazing and they actually like really rallied and i feel like we are um just as productive as we were before and in some ways we we are are more productive about mm -hmm. certain things you know um it's it's definitely there's parts of it that are harder you know like we don't all have home offices you know like i'm just i just work in my bedroom you know i just have to make sure i make my bed every day before i i go on calls <laughs> um and then the team it's um it's really grown we 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 um Kind of like when we shipped Overwatch 1, when it launched, we were around 60 to 70 people. And the team has continued to grow um, from there. And I don't think we're at quite 200 yet, but we just, just keep about. growing because this the game that we're making now, Overwatch 2, it's a much bigger game than the original one. It, it's even a bigger game than, like, even when I started to hear about Overwatch 2, it was like, oh, cool, like, yeah, like, this is gonna, I, I, I want another Overwatch, and then, Thanks. like, just kind of hearing everything that goes involved anymore? with it, are with, like, the PvE, and, the and, you know, now all these massive changes to PvP, like, the, the scope of the game is so big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's oh, huge, yeah. Um, but that's... It's really exciting working on something that has that many aspects to it. And the thing that, that that I like about it, and hopefully what we're showing here today is, is that we're able to work on something that's new, you know, and it has all these exciting elements while still focusing on what like made the original game great. Like we're we are like, hey, love or hate um, 5v5, we are committed to to like keeping the, the PvP of Overwatch as competitive um, as possible, and we are putting so many resources into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, explain yeah, Brick for two years. Forward. It's like all the heroes that you love from Overwatch 1 with the learnings from Thanks. Overwatch 1 I'd just evolutionize, right? Like, you know, pushing, pushing the game forward, you know, coming up with new kind of creative just ways to play. To this. So this this transcendence may seal the deal here. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Reaper Reaper did his dance on the cart and <laughs> he was gone. <laughs> so, Effects is uh, a huge prime. Appreciate uh, the prime. Uh, I'm much. sure I'm sure the the devs are going to. Uh, they'll know who won and lost. Uh, I was not keeping score of the matches. Uh, I'm sure they'll, <laughs> I'm sure be, they they'll be pretty angry that we didn't keep know, score. <laughs> Sunshine thinks that Jeff Thomas is on the door. Who won and lost, but uh, just, just at least really 20 awesome hour players lost like, their jobs the, today. The well, not today, but game today. Uh, you guys this year, they just got their lasting message. They're noticed to, like, that they're being out there who's let go next year. Playing Overwatch 1, interested in Overwatch 2 with all these PvP changes today. What would it be? I guess I'd one I'd say thank you so much for watching um, and thank you so much for like the the support and the communication like the active communication that has been present from our community ever since um, even from before Overwatch came out. So one I'd like to just give a heartfelt thank thank you to to everyone that's watching and has been involved in our community. Oh, I'm being serious. The so 100% is going to be a lot you know, of layoffs. We we are still listening. And, and we are still taking feedback on this game. And more than anything, we just want it to be the best version of itself um, that it can be. And we're committed to, to making it that. We, we come into work every day um, kind of like passionate and excited to, to work on this game, um, whether it's um, some of the some of the things in hero mode that we're doing for for the pve side of the game or whether it's the the maps or, or or heroes that we're working on for the pvp side of the game so thank you all thank you for letting us build this game for all of you because we love doing it uh how about for you uh jeff and dion i, I pretty much echo what aaron said of course thanks to community i mean we a lot of this kind of changes especially all this experimentation and things we've done starting Overwatch 2 was directly getting feedback from the community and hearing what people liked and didn't like, and hopefully that that, that comes across. Um, also to mention that, um, obviously, I, I think I've thrown it out a lot already, but this is all like pretty early work in progress still. We're still trying a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that I mentioned that isn't even in this, so you can see that we're very actively working on this stuff. Um, so if you like see something like, you know, I see Thanks. Doofus running around, you know, smash people against walls, and I can imagine somebody like, oh, Doofus is still face. doing his, you know, stun combo <laughs> kill, but like, you know, I, I suspect we'll be making a lot of changes to him, for example, especially if we do CC changes. That's so, Twitter on his right um, screen? It's sort of like the double-edged sword Maybe. of like, being able to show you guys the stuff really early is, you know, some of it's not quite done yet, but um, I think it's it's been awesome to really, um, you know, try to keep communication, communication up and letting you guys see what we're working on. 
Yeah, and I, I echo the same thing. Um, we have a pretty incredible team. What's your thought during the stream summarize in six and seven seconds? Anyone got QA, five gifted? Production, concepting, it's quite a crew. We love playing the game every day, and we look forward to getting it into players' hands soon. I didn't even know what's going on. You guys on social That's what I thought about this in seven seconds. The other members of the Overwatch team, like your <laughs> Thanks for the huge five. Mufasa, appreciate it, dude. Something that... Thanks so much in every conversation. So really excited to see what you guys have uh, in store for the future of the game. Uh, Aaron, what's next? Uh, what can, you know, the, the community look for? I think you guys have an AMA going on. Yep. We have one coming up in just a few days. Um, it's going to be on the, the main Overwatch Reddit um, or subreddit. Sorry. Um, so tune into that. And um, I think it's the three of us. Don't quote me on that. He's Don't signing remember. up Dion for it. Sam, <laughs> <laughs> they're all bots in their own way. Just, 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 just got signed up. I don't know my things that you just want. Let me know. Thanks, yeah, so much. Someone's gonna be there answering questions. Yeah, we'll, we'll send the Outlook <laughs> invites. No, we'll get everybody in here counting again, uh, like we did this morning. Uh, no, 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 nothing will be needed for that. But uh, yeah, and then we have uh, Overwatch League. Uh, kicking off again tomorrow. Uh, we'll be discussing a lot of the things that we're talking about today here at 11:30 uh, PT. And don't forget, guys, the Overwatch anniversary event is going on right now in game. Some really awesome skins uh, to earn. You can get that combat. Uh, you know uh, the the new Ana skin. I know by uh, winning games, or you can just keep losing games constantly and eventually get it just way slower. Uh, thank you guys so much uh, for everything today. Uh, truly a blast uh thank you aaron uh jeff and dion that'll be it from us uh follow play overwatch on all social medias to stay up with all the latest news for overwatch 2 we'll see you next time thanks guys thank you this is the biggest dog shit it could have been everything that i was feared of happening happened to today I had high hopes, I thought that they would know better, but for some reason they thought, okay, let's let a bunch of silvers play the game and show it off to all the people that actually care about the game and care with the leak. The most would be the best players in the world, but we showed it off with silvers. Now the question is, chat, why did they do that? Oh, I know why. Because if every single person in this lobby could aim, it would have turned into Widow v. Widow, Hanzo v. Hanzo, or Ash Mercy versus Widow Mercy. I mean, um, uh, Ash Mercy versus Widow matchups the entire time. With Zen right clicks going across the map, both tanks looking as useless as they looked in this game of Silvers. That I could not have been any more disappointed with. This is actually, unironically, the, the, the old vine of my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined actually to a literal fucking t there is nothing else to be said i am genuinely fucking disappointed i hope to god that they are open to talking and i hope that we can have a conversation about why this is not only a bad idea for the game but you know just on a on, on balance competitive everything go ahead have fun with your pve but the fact that you're destroying the pvp as well is just fucking disgusting the amount of overwatch league players who just lost their job today is uh, uh, just insane you just, at least 20 of them just lost their jobs 110 percent because you're not going to need that many tank players anymore because you're only going to need one and you're going to need someone who's a jack of all trades someone that can play all the tanks someone that can't just play main tank or off tank and the best part that's the most out of touch piece of shit bullshit is even for the highest level of a competitive level players that have been refining their skills for the last four or five years that are off tank or main tank players have a certain set of skills even the most best flex gods in the world like aimbot calvin used to be uh, as considered one of the best flex players on the entire ladder could play anything and there's tons of players in on you know even now that play every role almost to the highest fucking level there are probably five people in the entire world that can play both main tank and off tank at the highest absolute 4.6 plus tier level 4.7 level and it's like Violet, Choi, and maybe like a, a couple, like there's like, there's literally, there's five of them, maybe, maybe five. Because the way you play off tank, the way you play main tank have been such different skill sets for all of these years. And in this game modes, and with one tank, 
what's going to end up happening is is meta shift you're either going to have only main tanks or only off tanks you're going to be putting people into such disarray that games are going to be more imbalanced than they ever have been in before because what you're going to do is you're going to have old players and new players that are trying to learn the game and whether they need to learn reinhardt whether they need to play zarya whether they play to play diva whatever new tank it is they're going to have to learn those heroes every single time from the ground up and what you're going to have is you're going to have inflections of sr within somewhere of of eight to eight hundred to a thousand where you're going to be one week you have some 4500 chad winston player on your team then it goes to a roadhog meta and they can't fucking aim on hog and all of a sudden they're a fucking 3500 caliber player and they have to go all the way down the ladder and they're having that awful time losing game after game after game after game after game after game after game or they force their winston and their team just flames the shit out of them like oh you're forcing this dog shit hero why are you doing that you're ruining my games etc blah 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 you are literally going to absolutely kill not only the tank player experience but those other players experience because the way that the game has always run as the reason there was two tanks they have no idea what they're talking about as they said earlier in the drop live stream we can go back and find it they said that over that double main tank is oppressive there has been no double main tank other than that weird goats rush that they did um, in, in contenders two years ago where you played Winston, Ryan, Goomba comp and you just full sent into their team. No professional and high level teams have ever really played double main tank because double main tank has been garbage other than the very like week or two like Arissa Ryan was good or whatever the fuck that was going on. It has never been like that. It has never has been like that. It never will be like that. The fact that they think that is actually how it works is fucking scary and that every you're going to change the game on a level that is going to completely change overwatch for what it is now it will not rec it will not resemble it at all in when this happens and you're either going to a find a brand new player base or and and, and your old player base is going to be isolated away or B, your uh, your old current player base is going to somehow find a way to, to work with it, and the new player base and them are going to clash because those new players are going to are going to be trying to learn everything at once. Those old players are going to be very stuck in their old ways because they're going to be very good at certain heroes and very not good at certain heroes, and it's going to create a power dynamic between players of both DPS support and tank where there's is going to not only increase toxicity but it's going to increase or decrease your player experience based on what the meta is to a level that is amplified a hundred times worse than it is now people hate when the meta gets stuck they hate when it gets stuck because they don't like the heroes that are in it whether it was double shield whether they not a fan of whether if you're a mercy player you hate rush if you are a lucio player you hate poke whatever it is you're stuck in that meta even worse now because if you don't play that one hero that you need it is actually amplified 10 times more because before you could kind of get away with it until you got really high up you would still have some fl friction you have some pushback but at least people can be like well I want to play meta, but that guy's not playing it, so we just have to deal with it. Now you're putting it on one person. And if that one person doesn't do it, you're fucking screwed. And even better yet, that one person is not going to be inclined to because they will not be rewarded. Because of what I just witnessed, the tank players on both sides made no plays for four maps. One guy made a play on second point, on, on second map, on hog. He got three hooks, and that was the biggest plays of any tank player through the four fucking maps. So you're going to be forced as a tank player to play certain roles to play the meta, and you're not going to be rewarded for it. You're just going to be picking the hero that you're going to have to pick to, to satisfy the rest of the group, the rest of the team, and make sure you don't get rolled. And then it's going to become a coin flip of who don't who feeds first who doesn't feed the skill ceiling has to go through the roof at that point but it's it's actually become so high that it's not going to be obtainable because of how many different heroes you're going to have to learn and how many different play styles you have to learn for each and every single one of them you're going to make the player experience so dog shit i didn't think it was possible to make it worse but you found a way i should say congrats Koga, thanks for the five. Fenyata, thanks for the huge five. Frostcoy, thanks for the huge tier one as well. Welcome to the dog shit chat. You're fucking knee deep. Can't wait to go waist deep. This is a sad day. Oh, that was worth things to the tier one for two months as well. Appreciate sure it. Uh, you want to talk tank diff? You know what? You know what tank diff is now? Oh boy. Oh boy. Tank diff now is just who exists longer. Acknowledge the worst part of 5v5 is the lack of good comp names. No more double bubble. No more super monkey ball. No more hog and ball torture. I mean, you you want to you want to talk about the biggest tragedy of it is, is 
you you lose what Overwatch is. Thank you. Full rant video up on me sometime today. Oh, I've got a whole schedule plan now. I, I've got a whole schedule plan. Where's Sam? I didn't even 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 know what's going on. I've never had a more perfect emote or alert than for right now. H bar, thanks to the huge five. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate all you guys hanging out here today. If you haven't followed the stream, by the way. Uh, make sure you follow the stream before you go if you're headed out if you're hanging out for a little bit to see how it keeps going because I think me and Sam and a lot of other creators might hop into discord and talk about it um, So I also tweeted him so apparently I should go into the Overwatch stream and tell them their game shit and dead what a community come on lol I mean he's not wrong he's not wrong But at the same time, though, I, my my only criticism of him was saying that this is very good for Overwatch League because it's not like it's good for the the money of the pockets of the teams. Uh, it's terrible for the players. So, PK Frey, thanks for the huge prime. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, wow, I I. Is it just as opposed to how Sam usually treats the dev team? Sam's normally very, very harsh. Um, and to be honest with you, I typically try not to be as harsh. Um, but I can't not be harsh today. Six stacks have to kick someone out. All players lose their job. Ladder becomes toxic if they don't play meta. I mean, the list is going to go even on. But like from their point of view, they could say, oh, well, it was, gonna, it was already toxic. That's all you guys complain about that, you know? Very force thanks to the tier one as well. Appreciate it, dude. Um, Sam rarely likes 5v5. Yeah, well, you know who I've also seen? I saw Craggy tweet out that he liked 5v5 and thought it was going to be more competitive. Craggy also hates um, Roll Lock because Craggy is a very good flex player. Craggy is one of those players that can play everything very, very well. He's super talented, but it makes but not everybody's like that, and it makes the ladder really fucking... If you, if you played Roll Q and you played before Roll Q... You will know that roll queue was a good thing for the game. Was it good for competitive high level Overwatch League play? Mm, you see less comps, maybe not. Do you know it was good for the game though? Yes, you do. It, it made it brought a lot of balance to the game. So, what do DPS players like going five v five? I mean, Find me one tank player. That's your that's your goal, chat. Find me one tank player who says it's a good idea. Uh, Sakar bike, pick. I don't know how to say your name. Sorry. Thanks for the huge prime, dude. I appreciate it. Find me one. Talk with Emong. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to bring Emong stream down. Boger. Oh, Boger likes it. Boger. Boger. Do you like it? I don't know if he's still here. Gito likes it. Gito plays ball. That's different. You're basically solo tanking at that point anyways. To be honest with you, if you look at this game, if you look at this game and you say, I like it based on personal, like, like oh, it's good for me. I hate to say it because I like a lot of people that are saying, like, oh, it's good. You're kind of being a piece of shit. Because like, if you, now you could say you like it because you like the idea of it competitively, right? If you say like, oh, like, you know, like, I think that this could be competitively really good, right? If that's what you think, fine. But if you like that idea because it personally benefits you, you're kind of being a piece of shit. It's being selfish. Because at that point, you don't want what's good for the game. You want what's good for you. And as somebody who has advocated when things were, even my own heroes were too strong in the past... And said nerf them it's kind of dog shit like for example when ryan had 50 percent steadfast i was like no that's too strong that needs to get nerfed like it was way too strong and it got nerfed i was someone that was that highly said yes ryan steadfast is too strong 100 percent. i stood by it
But it's funny when, when you know. Flats, God, you man. are the better ride and the ride king. New maps look great. Wait, hang on. Shut up, LMAO. Main tank people whining don't want what's good for the game because his role got changed. You understand my role was dead for a year and we dealt with it, right? You do understand that it actually affects off tanks more than it does main tanks. You do understand it will affect every single tank player because... The way the meta will work is you have to play one meta tank at a time, and the way the off tank is played and the way the main tank is played is very, very different. Do you understand they've had different play styles all this time? There's nobody who's just a tank player. Anyone who comes in your game and says, I'm a tank player, is typically dog shit. You typically say, I play a main tank or I play off tank. If someone comes in my chat and says, hey, I want to get better, and they tell me their heroes are Hog, D.Va, Ryan, Winston, and Orissa, I go, why the fuck are you playing two different roles at once? Because you're playing dog shit. You don't even understand how to play the game. That's your first problem. So to sit there and be like, you. you're just whining. Do you even understand anything run, about the game? Or are you so fucking plat? Tell me your time. plat without telling me your plat. Jesus. I'm on fire. Steven Timothy, thanks for the tier one as well. I appreciate it, dude. Thank you so much. But that's the problem. If you have, if you buff tanks, it's not about main tanks or off tanks. Just don't get it twisted. It has nothing to do with main tanks or off tanks. It has to do with the tank category. Period. If you over buff tanks to compensate, then it becomes tank diff every game, and tank players are dominating, and everyone else doesn't have fun. If you underpower them, then the tank players are useless. They just stand there and try not to feed an AFK, and then the tank players don't have fun, and they don't want to cue the role. You know what I think is that's the choice that they've made because if they have one only tank player, it's more likely because it'll reduce queue times by 50% by only having one of those. Removing one DPS is better? No, that's that's definitely ain't it either. Um Captain thinks with a three uh three thirty three, by the way. No. Uh Oh, so thanks for huge fifteen hundred bits. New maps look great. That's true. I didn't even know what's going on. Never had a better time than for that than right now. Nacho, thanks for the two one for six months. And my guy, my friend, thanks for the huge five gifted as well. Appreciate it, dude. Thank you so much. <sighs> like I, I, I hate to say it, but like there's so many people that just don't understand. Like you sit there and you're like you're whining, but you don't you don't even have an understanding of the game. That's like me talking about like the economy and saying like, you know, how a certain company going out of business would greatly affect the stock market, and you fucking are still in fucking second grade doing coloring books. Like, what is your opinion at that point? You don't even understand. You have no idea what the repercussions is. Like, you're saying, like, oh, you can't go fucking buy your favorite bag of chips from a store. It's like, I don't care the store closed down. It's going to fucking ruin everything in this whole... You know what I mean? Like, that's what we're that's what we're talking about. Like, that's literally the levels we're talking about. I'm on fire! Some of us are lower than top, lower than top two tank. No, 100%. I, I'm not stupid. Like, I know that, but... But also, but you're not sitting there going, you're just whining, are you? I don't think you are. Little stick, by the way, things the huge tier one. Appreciate it, dude. Yeah, if you're not, then then it doesn't affect you. I'm talking specifically to people like you're just crying, you're just whining. It's like, have you ever been to my stream? How often does that happen? Like other than just like, damn, this doesn't feel good, man. Fuck. Like this is like legitimately real. Removing roll ro roll lock won't help Thank it either, though. I was excited about, and now I couldn't care less about it. They've literally said fuck you to pretty much every tank player. They better give us a six v six mode. Guarantee it would be more populated. Uh, no, they w it honestly wouldn't because the competitive play and quick play are what keeps the game alive. And if you isolated those, you'd isolate the player base even more, and they ain't gonna do that. They already they already kind of didn't wish they didn't do quick play classic because it it it. It made it even more um, sparse. <sighs> I 
I mean, look at the people's tweets that were on it that were like, yeah, like they're, they're not excited. Nobody's, nobody's excited. People are open-minded. People are like, yeah, fuck it. I'm open-minded, but nobody's excited. I think it is set in stone entirely unless there's a major pushback. Like it has to be major. I think Swaz will do it with me again. Not wrong. What's major pushback look like? You'll know it when you see it. Tweeting and Overwatch doesn't do anything. The social media manager ain't there. So is it impossible to balance 5v5 or the tank role? I'm struggling with this hard. Uh, my opinion, then, it, it, they'd have to, they would have to make a rotation of, like, what becomes the strongest tank every once in a while. Like, everything being balanced would be really tough. Oh, man. Yo, is Sam firing up this fucking podcast or what? Sam wants to do a podcast, like right now. At least I thought he did. <clears throat> He's going to get food. Okay. I'm on fire. <sighs> Not looking forward to 5v5, but at least we still got your stream. Z Cook, thanks for the two, three, four months. Very kind, dude. Um, I'm actually trying to write a tweet right now, chat, and I, I'm literally lost for words. This is all I have. This is bad for Overwatch, period. I saw Poco's tweet. I don't even have anything else. Send tweet. Okay. Thank you. Does our two team receive input from Owl or anyone that plays the game religiously? We don't know anything.
Dude, imagine. We we literally went through fucking BlizzCon. We went through BlizzCon. Got no PvP shit. Got put in the dark and said, wait. And then we got handed that. I honestly don't care if SCP is arguing for it. That it's it's dog shit. Their community is 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 there is like a few creators that are like yeah like you know like I'm either open to it or saying yeah, it's one hundred and ten percent dog shit. I literally don't care. Like I'm like like I'm not trying to be ignorant. I'm not trying to be rude. I genuinely do not care. I genuinely do not fucking care. Do you want to talk about it? We'll talk about it. Do you want to talk about it? We'll talk about it. Uh, is Sam putting this fucking podcast together? If not, then maybe I'll do it. I want Iman to get back, though, first. When he gets back, I want to talk to him really quick. I don't want to, like, ruin his stream's vibe or anything, but... Fire! Mad Tag Tagnor. Thanks for the huge prime, dude. Um I'm on fire. And Gandalf the Purple, thanks to the Prime as well. Appreciate you guys. I don't give a shit, dude. I don't give a shit. I'm on fire! Y'all don't have to fucking come report to me like it's fucking drama central. I said what I said. Wine Lord, thanks for the huge prime, dude. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, dude. I I mean, I don't know. We'll figure out we'll figure it out on 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 when the AMA happens, I'm sure. Because I'm people are gonna be very, fire. very, very upset. Coach G, thanks for the huge prime. Uh, Warlord, thanks for the prime as well. Appreciate you guys. With its hundred percent chance, it's no good. Yes. I mean, even looking at Twitter right now. Go look at Twitter right now. Any of you, anyone who follows us or watch t Twitter. Thank you. Hey, look, it's okay. I made a deal with the emus. I am sending them to make was with Blizzard. Emus is sending them to make the Blizzard. That's funny. Dante sums it up. What Dante say? Thank you. I swap from off tank to DPS. That's funny. Thank you. Contrary to what people may think, I love the change to 5v5 even as a main tank player because it's a fresh perspective of the game and everyone's decisions in the game now has more influence in the outcome of a match, I like the higher stakes decision in matches. I don't like 5v5 because it benefits me far from it, I just like the direction the game is going with 5v5. The game, everyone's decision in the game now more influence in the outcome of a match. 
Um, the first half I disagree with. Like the higher stakes decision matches, I don't like five five because it benefits me far from it. Just like the direction the game is going. Hmm. I definitely have to disagree with you on the first half. Uh, the second half is your own personal opinion. You can have your own personal opinion. Um, the reason why your decisions aren't actually more impactful um, is because you're not making as many decisions, actually. Um, as they just said, they want to feel more shootery, um, which means that you'll actually be rewarded more likely than not for mechanical plays um, than decision-based plays, which is what made Overwatch Overwatch. Um, yes, things were annoying, like shields and whatnot, and double shield was awful, don't get me wrong. I'm not disagreeing with that in the literal slightest. But Overwatch is Overwatch because you have those quick shields, you know? Make them less powerful, you know? But Thanks. don't forget what happened hey, with double shield. I joined the stream late and I 100% agree with your POV and I absolutely hate the 5v5 change. Also, do you think Overwatch slash Overwatch 2 is even team-based anymore? Any competitive game like that's like like that is team based. Even Call of Duty is team based, you know. Um, but it's not the same type. Um, Overwatch was positioning, cooldowns, hitting your shots. Of course. So you want to know what high level Overwatch is? High level Overwatch is pretty much everybody can hit the shots, right? All the DPS players are pretty much all DPS players are pretty close to each other on on par with aim mechanically. Um, with some slight variations between the top and the bottom. But all of them aim like absolute gods, right? What set them apart was their strategy, their team play, and their positioning. Okay? That's what made Overwatch Overwatch. We just watched two Widow players dominate a whole game, pretty much. And those were like gold players. Just the truth. Point and clicked. And that was it. And I can sit here and just keep my mouth shut and be like, oh, yeah, it's going to be fine. But 